I'm cool, but Nick, you're going to start jerking off. Yeah. Well, we can get naked later, I suppose. We'll just see how it goes, eh? Anyway. Oh, shit, we're live. Damn, didn't want people to hear that. Damn it. Hello, everyone. It is The Drinker, and, I, and I'm joined today by Az. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, my friend. It's always a pleasure to have you on. And you can oh, see our faces you, today. Sadly, sorry. <laughs> our glorious faces. <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> well, the oh, thing is, like, uh, yeah, like I was saying to you before, like I did, uh, I did my stream with Robert like a week or two ago, and uh, everyone was like, "Well, Robert's on on the camera. Why are you not drinker?" And I was just like, "I, I forgot to set it up. Sorry." <laughs> yeah, this oh, here I am. One. Yeah, I watched that because I was watching that. I was like, "Oh no, Robert's got his camera on, and Drinker's just not got his camera on." Mm. So it's just like poor Robert because he'll always put his camera on, regardless of yeah. If he'll be in a room full of non cameras, he'll come on EFAP, he'll put his camera on. <laughs> yeah, so it was bless quite him. Funny. I mean, it's on for four and a half hours or something. Yeah, it was a long fucking stream. There was just so much to say about that movie, you know? Um, it was one of those films that, uh, you know, it inspires a lot of discussion. Mm-hmm. Put it that way. It wasn't. It wasn't just like, yeah, we loved it or we hated it. It was like, yeah, there's there's an awful lot going on there that we could talk about. So it was good. Oh yeah, enjoyable. Um, you made me go and watch it afterwards. I actually think I sent Robert. It's either no, it's you. It's either you or Robert. I sent a text uh, of me actually. No, I think it's you actually. I sent a text of me actually watching watching um, Star Trek: The Motion Picture because after after watching that, it's just like I. It's been a good few years. And I do, I do remember loving the film. And then I watched it back. I was like, "Yeah, now I know why I love the film. It was just, it's, it's so good. It's really, it's really, it's a complex film." Uh, yeah, and I loved, I loved Shatner's just great in it. He's just so good as a, as a, a captain. Well, an admiral who can't let go of his his old ship and. Uh, yeah, the Decker relationship with him. Oh, it's great. Oh, I loved it. I think we, we, we were talking a lot about all the ship porn, uh, just how awesome the Enterprise looks and all those big lingering special effects shots of it like gliding over the the, the alien uh, spacecraft. It's all beautiful looking. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone in yeah. chat said, uh, <laughs> yeah, 10 minutes later, it's still yeah. going. <laughs> I think someone just, so, someone, Someone described it as like a blowjob that goes on for about three hours. Like initially you're loving it and then you start to like yeah, yeah, get a bit yeah. bored and then yeah. you start to panic like it's never yeah, going to end. Oh my God, I'm just kind of stuck. <laughs> it's, good, but it's like, we're not progressing. Can we? Mm. Yeah. Like if uh, you're going to show a, a shuttle docking sequence, you're getting every second of that fucking sequence, man. Every procedure they have to go through, you're oh, going to get yeah. to watch it all. The Spark, the Spark shuttle docking. Yeah, yeah. It's like, wow, you're actually <laughs> going to show us the entire procedure. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then Spark just gets off. And, Hello, Spark. Fuck off, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got shit to do, buddy. Yeah. I'm going to face the fucking Russian prick. Get out of here. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's great. I loved it. I think- it's, it's such a good film, though. Yeah, speaking of good films, um, we we came here to discuss Die Hard 2 because, man, I, like I did a review of Die Hard, the first one, like a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely mm. loved it. You know, just watching that again, it's one of my favorite action films of all time. Like, just brilliantly paced, so much going on in it. Great villain, great hero, um, great action sequences, great dialogue, just everything you would look for in a film. And, you know... It, the sequel, Die Hard 2, like, I think it always got a bit of a shit reputation as being, like, kind of a lackluster follow-up, and, you know, it, it totally doesn't measure up to the first movie, and I thought, God, it'd be interesting to watch it again, because it's been a good few years since I've seen it all the way through, and I thought, let's let's give it a watch, and then we could talk about it, and, man, I, I don't know about you, I was really impressed by it, like, I really enjoyed that movie, it... it Again, like the first one, it had great action sequences. There's a few bits with iffy special effects and grenades that take about 20 minutes to go off. But, you know, (laughs) generally speaking, I thought it was fucking great. And it's got all the hallmarks of a great 80s action film. Like, people swearing like crazy bastards constantly. Everyone's smoking. 
people are mm-hmm. like drinking and stuff. It's just, oh, it's brilliant. Mm. Really if enjoyed I, it. I, I, actually, I'm going to ask you a question. How would you describe Die Hard Two? As you, you're if giving I, it, um, you you're giving it a uh, a spin to somebody. You you've got like a couple of sentences to to sell Die Hard Two to somebody, or to to put. You know, in in a box, a little bit of a box. What is Die Hard Two? It's Die Hard One in an airport. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Do you know what? No, it is? like I'm doing a disservice there. I'll t- this is what Die Hard Two is. Die Hard Two is a film about the extreme lengths a man will go not to pay a parking ticket. <laughs> that is John McClane's arc in the movie. <laughs> starts off with him getting a parking ticket not wanting to pay the parking ticket and it ends with him having the parking ticket torn up that is his arc that is i, I suppose when you put it that way yeah i, I never and thought about it, was, it in yeah. those terms and but it's a beautiful it, arc it ripped up. He had to he had to do all the things that he had to do kill all yeah. those people <laughs> yep destroy planes you know mm-hmm. like kill multiple people it was worth it though because parking oh, tickets yeah. are a pain in the arse, like you know. Yeah, and if you don't was... pay them, go on, go on. No, if you don't pay them quickly, you, they they just mount up, and you have to pay more in the long run. So yeah, I can totally understand why he went through all that. <laughs> yeah, it's because like, you you mentioned at the start the the absolutely excessive swearing, and it's quite interesting because like for the first ten minutes or so, there's there's no swearing. There might be the odd shit. Maybe just just smatted him. It's like no swearing, and then as soon as he says his first fuck, that's it. <laughs> the rails. Every sentence has got fuck in it from there on in, and it's just like this is glorious. This is glorious. Eighties, hmm. you know, he's, he's there at the desk with the receptionist, and she's just dripping looking at him. <laughs> I was about to say that, yeah. Fucking phone with a fax machine going, smoking like a fucking trooper, just swearing. <laughs> fucking fuck, fuck, fuck. All right, darling. You know, can't it's... fuck you. I'm married. All right. Fuck it. Yeah, just the, just the fax, ma'am. Just the fax. I love how he stubs out his cigarette on the floor right in front of her, her desk as well. <laughs> just no fucks given from John McLean. It's just, just they're like. <laughs> I would totally suck him off. Yes, he yep. would. It? And then uh, there were the, other woman, the news woman. I want to have your baby. Yeah, she's like, That's if you give me this story, I'll have your baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like this is so great because this will drive this will drive people crazy in 2020. Some people just lose their shit with that. <laughs> oh, it's great. This is great. <laughs> this is There's a great. A lot- I'm just looking at the super chats here as well. Get it together, chat. Just imagine Drinker in his underwear. Oh no, he's hot. Stop <laughs> it. I'll turn the camera off if you do this. Yeah. yeah. All uh, we have to do I, is just press the button and it's all gone. It's all gone. Yeah, there we go. Hold on. Uh, oh yeah, because I think yeah, my audio and video are slightly out of sync. So maybe yeah. if I just stop it for a second, it'll match up again. Uh, here we go. And I'm back. So hopefully that'll help. <laughs> you're you're all over the place. <laughs> oh damn. You're going yeah. into full on like yeah, rave mode. I'm just getting like constant flashing. You're gonna be tri- <laughs> triggering epileptic seizures here. Let's go, let's go. Round and round it goes where it stops, nobody knows. Indeed. <laughs> Do but, get camera on, camera off. But uh, yeah, one one the story of one man's desperate uh, attempts to not pay his parking ticket. It's mm. great. Um, but no, I, I mean, yeah, like going back to this, the point I was making at the beginning, like I was, um, I was genuinely pleased with this movie. And when I compare it to what passes for action films now, man, mm. it's just so much more entertaining. Like Bruce Willis has just got mad charisma in it. You know, yeah. um, you've got, uh, William, whatever his fucking name is, the, the bad guy in it, like Colonel Sadler. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, yeah he's played Sadler. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason he's doing like um, kung fu or something in the in fucking yeah. butt naked in his hotel room. <laughs> I'll never understand. <laughs> it's so random and it's so pointless. I'm, I'll never understand why they put that in there. I was like, yeah, it's just like wow. You know, you two minutes in, 
Then he just got a naked man's butt in your <laughs> face as he's doing Tai Chi uh, while watching the news. It's just like, okay, okay. I mean, you know, why not? Why not? There's well, no female a... nudity in this, just male nudity. <laughs> Well, that's what I was going to say, yeah, because you know how we were discussing, like, in 80s movies, there would just be a random tit shot. Mm. Like, we had it in Commando. You had it in the original Die Hard, actually, when the terrorists yeah. first come in, and there's just a couple fucking in an office yeah. somewhere, and you just yeah. see the woman getting hauled out, just so you can get the tit shot. Uh, mm-hmm. But you don't get that here. You just get a butt shot of a guy. It's not really what yeah. I wanted to see, but, you know, okay, fine. Throw it in there. I have to see who the director was and what their proclivities were. <laughs> But it's just like, yeah, just I want you, uh, I want you in your room doing tai chi, you know, something like spiritual, and uh, but you got a good physique, so we need them to make sure that you, you're looking like Willis's physical equal. So just, just get naked, and I'm just gonna get the baby oil. Why yeah. put all over you? And Yo, then, crank, uh, crank that heating up to max, man. Yeah. And there was like some really like woo kind of shots of when he turns around. It's just like, oh, I'm gonna get okay. Just just managed to avoid the dick. They 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 are yeah. I expected them to do that thing where you'll have like a, a potted plant or something right where his dick should be, and it's just like <laughs> just <laughs> random stuff just was, constantly yeah. blocking it. He was like turning to the side. It was just his torso would go slightly out of shot, so his dick would be covered, and then. It cut down to like a table and it just cut him off with his pubic line. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> that was the maybe they. That went into the, this covering this guy's dick. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I like to think the actor insisted upon it himself. Maybe it was just like, uh, damn, I've been at the gym working out for this shit for like weeks yeah. or months. Like, I've gotten good shape. I just want to show this off, man. Have you seen my ass? Have you seen how tight this is? <laughs> I want to do Tai Chi, <laughs> motherfucker. Well, this is the same guy who played Burpees. the Reaper in Bill and, <laughs> in, in Bill and Ted too. Um, so one of the guys in chat was saying, like, oh, don't overlook my butt. I work out all the time, and reaping burns a lot of calories. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an odd scene to go straight into, but okay. That's, yeah. uh, that's what you want to go for. So, uh, yeah, so obviously... Victory. So obviously it's all set in in Dulles International Airport in DC, and um, mm. McLean's there to pick up his wife. You know, um, it's a weird one because like she was in LA and he's moved out there. Like he's now a cop based in LA, but they're flying into Washington. Washington, because yeah. I th- I think that's where the in laws live or something. So they're going to spend Christmas with them. It, it's a bit weird, but no, oh, fuck it. Like whatever. They're at the airport there, and it's it's really busy. Um, and McLean's car gets towed, and the the cop who's towing it is just a complete dick about yeah. it. Yeah, I'm a policeman. Come on, brotherhood and all that. Uh, it's yeah, a dick, motherfucker. It's, oh, <laughs> I love when she um, when Holly phones him as well, and like uh, he's got a beeper. Remember oh. beepers, kids? <laughs> oh yeah, I had I had one at work <laughs> once. <laughs> Okay, and so he's, yeah, he's, he's got a collar and it's like, he thinks she's landed, but it's like, no, this is the 90s now. We have beepers and earphones and fax machines. Crazy yes. futuristic stuff like this. Yeah. They were very keen to show off the technology of this. This is, oh, yeah. this is Die Hard, but Die Hard's gone bondish. We've got fax machines. we got beepers. We've got, can you tell me where the phone booths are, please, so I can go make a call to my wife. That was like the that was the to me watching that was just hilarious because we don't think of it nowadays it's just like you know we're straight up on the mobile but he gets his beeper he has to look at his beeper then he has to go to the reception and then ask the reception where the telephone booths are <laughs> and he has to go and call his wife and then nowadays in a film he'll just be like ring hi darling yeah okay I'm at the airport right now see ya no. That's now a five-minute fucking scene in Die Hard 2. That's what that is. You, yeah, like, see, back then, if you wanted to call someone, you really had to think about it, whether it was a worthwhile investment of your time, because it was mm. going to be a lengthy process. Um, but the thing is, like, none of this movie could even happen now, 
Because like the entire plot based around crashing the planes and stuff, oh, yeah. that could be overridden in a heartbeat just by phoning someone on the plane, like on their mobile. Yeah. So like none of it could even happen anyway. But like back then, I suppose it was a bit more plausible. Um, I just love movies in like the early nineties. You know when like I guess technology was starting to to gather pace and computers were getting pretty good and you had beepers and mobile phones and stuff and. Yeah, like everyone was just yeah, everyone was so enamored by this stuff. Like it was so innocent and so like fun, you know. And yeah, the, the well, way they put it into movies, it was like the world of the future. We're living in it now. It's the nineties. <laughs> there's, there's a definite, um, there's a definite pre and post nine eleven, isn't there? The world oh, that yes, we live yeah. in. It's like the 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 pre one is just great. Just you got. I mean, that the, the scene later on where he just shoots the the policeman with the blanks, and everyone's just looking at him, but they're all got guns pointing. I'm just like, yeah, oh, not, shot this. Why man are you not firing? Like, yeah. Like nowadays, it'd be just dropped in a heartbeat, and it's like yeah. the, well, the idea. Thing to me was seeing all the people. It's just like, oh my god, people. Who are they? Yeah. What are these things? I haven't seen these yeah. for a year. Well, what is this airport? thing of which they yeah. speak. I haven't been one of them for like a year at travel, least. <laughs> travel. Never heard of it. Never yeah. Of it. <laughs> you mean you could get on planes and go places? Yeah. Who would have thought it? And sit next to each other. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. This. So this is a time like pre-9-11, pre-wokeness, pre-COVID, you know, back when the world was quite good. <laughs> like, I miss that time. <laughs> Can I just say, can I just say, I remember um, people giving giving his wife shit uh, in a series going, you know, you got Bruce Willis and his wife's like a little bit like plain and average and stuff and doesn't feel like he'd be with a woman like that. And I saw his wife in this movie. I was like, fuck, she's fucking hot. She's hot. hot. Yeah. She's really hot. You know, it's just like, holy shit. No, I she's, didn't realize she's... how fucking hot she was. She had like a shitty like eighties perm back in the first yeah. movie, but there's a weird scene where like near the end where like her blouse gets ripped open for no apparent reason, and um, she's got like a nice cleavage shot going on, and it's like, oh man, actually, totally missed she's... that. What what was I yeah. doing then? I missed that. Fuck. <sighs> See, that's what happens. I'm probably making myself a drink or so, just pouring myself a thing out and miss the gratuitous babe shot. Oh well. Yep. But go back to it and look for it. Um, she is she's pretty hot, and in this one she looks even better. So yeah, I think she's. I think Don's doing okay there. Well, this is this say. is free to watch on Amazon Prime. So if you've got Amazon yeah. Prime, this is free. you can just put Die Hard Two in, bang, free. You don't have to buy it, rent it, anything like that. Go for it. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I remember the first shot, and I was just like, holy shit, absolutely would. I uh, because I went on Sky Movies to look for it to begin with, and it was like huh? ten pound or something. I was like, for a fucking thirty-year-old movie, movie? Are you kidding me? Um, and then yeah, Amazon, it's free, so like, fuck it, that'll do. Yeah, yeah go watch it. Go watch it if you just get the chance, because you'll have fun. But anyway, so the that's the kind of setup. So like, John's at the airport to pick up his wife. She's inbound on a flight from from LA. Uh, his car's been towed. He's kind of just killing time, I guess, until. Um, until she arrives. Uh, but then, uh, what's his name? William Sadler is butt naked in his hotel room, doing his Tai Chi. Yeah. His dick carefully hidden from view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm never going to get through this. <laughs> having his penis <laughs> hid by a pot. <laughs> pot, pot in one. But eventually, he realizes the necessity of... Fucking Austin Powers scene where he keeps standing up and everything's blocking his dick. (laughs) And the melons and all that. That is exactly what this scene is. Yeah, but uh, eventually he recognizes the necessity of putting clothes on, and so he does. (laughs) Uh, And off he goes, and um, yeah, him and a bunch of his mates are obviously up to something, but you don't quite know what it is to begin with. And then some of them make their way into the airport, and um, I think that's when John McClane spots them, like heading into the luggage area, and he kind of knows that something is up because his his cop sense is tingling. Well, uh, he recognizes and... the colonel, doesn't he? He recognizes the guy. He does, guy yeah. Like he doesn't. Like, I, I've got one of those faces. I've been on TV. He says or something. Yeah, because he doesn't know where he's seen him, but he bumps into mm. him, and he's like, "Yeah, I've. Uh, I think I know you." 
and yeah, he makes that kind of like, um, you know, excuse like, oh yeah, I get that a lot. I've been on TV. So, okay, there's obviously something significant about this guy. We don't quite know what it is yet. Um, and that's when, yeah, John McClaney spots these guys going into like the luggage area of the airport, like the, the restricted area. Uh, and so he follows them in there and he sees that they're up to something. But when he tries mm -hmm. to like interrupt them, they, they pull guns on him and they start shooting at him. And you have like a big, a big fight scene. Like this movie's only been going for a couple of minutes and yeah. it's straight yeah, into it the first really, action yeah. scene. Like it doesn't it's fuck really around. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is this movie starts. There's, there's, there is no there's no chaff here. There's there's no 25 minutes of of building up character. This is John McClane's got a parking ticket, calls up his wife, he shoots some people in the face. It's just like <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, and a man hides his penis. Boom! It's just it's yeah. go for it. It's just, that's all in the first five fucking minutes. Dead yeah. people, penis man, and fucking fit fit wife on phone. Yeah, it's it's really good. It, it it doesn't mess around. And like I did like with the first movie how they they kind of took their time to introduce John and Holly and they build up their relationship. Mm -hmm. But obviously with the second one, they knew they didn't have to bother with that. It was enough to give yeah. you a quick recap. Uh, you know, they're back together now and they're going to spend Christmas together. So fine, we know where they're at in their life and straight into the action. Um, and, you know, <laughs> the fight scene in the, the luggage area just, it always makes me laugh because John just finds whatever items are nearby and uses them to his advantage. Like, I think he hits someone with a fucking golf club way oh, before yeah, The Last yeah. of Us 2 did it, way before fucking Abby did it. Abby, yeah, John McClane was making it special. <laughs> John McClane was caving in skulls long before Gigantor thought of it. Uh, he kept, he kept and, getting the gun shot out of his hand in this film. Last film he had no shoes. This this time he kept getting his bloody gun shot out of his hand all the time. Yeah. He loses his gun and then he, he he sprays a guy in the face with like an aerosol of some kind, mm. which looks painful as fuck. And then yeah. the, his mate shoots at him and it blows the aerosol can apart in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I think you, you need to rethink your priorities there, man. Just shoot him in the head, not the aerosol yeah. can. <laughs> Oh, if I shoot this aerosol can, it's going to stop him from spraying my mate in the ass. Shoot him in the fucking head! His head is bigger as well than the aerosol can. All you're proving is you're a very good shot and you could have used it to better advantage. That's all. Yeah, because these guys are all... Crush your skull. <laughs> yeah, because these guys are all military, so like they'll be crack mm. shots like with this kind of stuff. So they, they, he oh, could easily have dropped, it? John. <laughs> Maybe he's just dumb as fuck, like, and he's really bad at prioritizing things. Like you say, oh, I sprained my friend. I will stop the spray and help my friend. <laughs> well, it's just a fluke. He's aiming for his head. Hit the aerosol can. Shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Either way. I mean, um, I mean, marks from ship. Don't tell anyone. Fuck. More fighting. Naturally, they end up on a conveyor belt with a big rolly thing that's mm. going to crush someone. Uh, and John just shoves the guy's head into it and just uh, squishes him. It just it pops like a melon kind of thing. It's <laughs> nice and bloody. And yeah, uh, I kind of love that. I love the fucking eighties slash nineties. It's great. <laughs> there was something about films back then, and Indiana Jones did it as well. Like there was all these a roller or like something that would crush a person Grinder, that they would yeah. get pulled in. Yeah, or like a paper Ice shredder or something like that. Ice the Hill yeah. had one. As yeah. Well. That was eight. Uh, I think Temple of Doom had it as well. When guy gets pulled into yep. like a roller thing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a nasty one. Ooh. Yeah, it's uh, it's always a it's a bad way to go. But this guy goes in head first, so I guess it was over quick. Uh, then his mate's running away, and John chases him in a bike for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? He's like, oh, he's getting away. What what can I use? And there's a fucking push bike there, yeah. and he. <laughs> He doesn't even ride it. He just like hops on it and pushes it along. <laughs> it's like, mate, that's going slower than you just running on your yeah, legs. Sprinting, yeah. Maybe it's just, but you know, it's kind of like, you know, I've had a, I've, I've, I've had a bit of a fight. I'm Thirty-five. I'm aching. Just gonna sit on a bike and push it for a bit. You know, get a bit of puff back. Yeah, it'd be great it's if there'd been a Segway or something there, and he just like just humming <laughs> along on it. Just waiting for a kid to walk past and just then run over the kid or something. That just it would fit in perfectly with a film like this. Get out of the way, kid. 
he even uh, he even rings the bell on it to get the guy's attention because the guy's getting away and he rings the bell and the guy's like, oh, turns around. I wonder who that could be. Is it for me? <laughs> Hello? Oh, shit, you got me. Oh, well, uh, Just oh, when bro. I thought I was out, you outsmarted me, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> this Tom McLean guy, he's got all the moves. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but uh, this guy gets away because I think John gets like piled into a big um, like avalanche of luggage that stops him for a while and yeah. um, the cops the cops show up to to like you know hold up him thinking he's a bad guy and the other one gets away so he's like ah oh, fuck you know yeah um, he's, he's he, gun in his face yeah and the cop um, with your badge Cleveland, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> killer lines, dude. Yeah, it's like these one liners, they're gonna. It, th- th- there's literally parts of the film where people are just your turn for a one liner, your one liner. Okay, my one line is gonna go to your one liner, my one liner. It's just these are great, just great little fucking things that they have in these type of films. Yeah, it's just and always the, this... that little thing at the end, that little few words at the end for no reason. Just no reason. Yeah, like, there's... don't worry, sir. We're going to protect you. Okay, thanks. But who's going to be protecting you? Well, yeah. they're, they're a team of elite military guard. They're going to look after each other. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> you need the extra money. God bless them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like later on when the, the SWAT team go into the, the, the Skywalk area, and there's like a dude there who stops the conveyor belt and is like, "Hey asshole, what do I look like to you?" It's like, yeah, a sitting duck. And who was that that shot him dead? That was the the great Robert Patrick, yeah, T one thousand himself. Yeah, an, ex- a an, an extremely young looking Robert Patrick at mm. that. Like, damn, this was only like a year before T two. Yeah, a year before T two. Yeah, but yeah, so probably two years with filming uh, mm. and such. But yeah, he was like fresh faced. Uh yeah, and he's just like, holy shit, dude! You're gonna you're gonna be T one thousand in night, you know, one year's time, and you're gonna be in one of the greatest movies ever. <laughs> I mean, him and William Sadler, they actually look kind of similar, don't they? Mm. Like they they've got that kind of similar build, that similar facial look yeah, and that, stuff. Yeah, like, uh, very clean cut kind of look about them. Um, mm. But yeah, um, but it's cool to see him in it. So. Yeah, like John, uh, sorry, McLean gets kind of um, brought in by the police and they eventually realize who he is. And they they just want to like um, go back to normal. Like they just think it's a bunch of um, thugs stealing luggage or something. The the chief of the airport police is an absolute asshole. He doesn't really do his job properly. And, you know, McLean just marches into his office and just starts trying to lay down the law with him. Um, what was and- that guy's name? Was that guy's name Fucky Muck Fuckface? Yeah, <laughs> all, his, his vocabulary just consisted of fuck and off. Yeah, and that was fuck, fuck off, fuck McLean, fuck off, Mc- fuck, him, fuck, fuck up McLean. <laughs> <laughs> You're under arrest, you motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, it's just like holy. This guy, this guy's not getting laid at home. He's going home. No, he- he's stressed to the eyeballs at work. He ain't getting none. He getting none. Yeah, he, he's got a lot of anger issues going on. You know, he's having this big rant about like how busy the airport is, and he's like, "We've got everyone from the Shriners Convention to the goddamn Boy Scouts going through here, but John McClane's got a problem. Yeah. Let's shut down the whole fucking airport." He wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. That that airport was packed. The social distancing was horrendous in that place. It really was. Yeah, health and safety would be having a field day. But I mean, it's 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 Dulles Airport, so it's like one of the big hubs in America. So mm. you know, it, it is a busy place, and I, I think the as they describe in the story, um, there's a, a blizzard going on, and so some of the other airports have been shut down, like the regional ones, and all the airplanes yeah. have been shunted there. So the place is kind of overloaded already, um, and it's Christmas week, so it's just adding to the chaos, really. So this guy's like stressed to the max. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't actually just die of a heart attack in the film. 
just keel over. Oh, and, and of course the the um the little joke at the end is that that guy's the brother of the the park the policeman who gave him the parking ticket. Him, hey, Jimmy, yeah. my brother. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, the guy just turns around and he's like, "Merry Christmas." Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Like a couple of cunts. There they go. Right there. Right there. <laughs> bless him. Yeah, because McLean sees that guy again, doesn't he? Like, um, just when the, the guys are going into the luggage area. Um, mm. And he's like, he tries to go and alert the cops. And like, one of them happens to be that asshole who towed his car. Uh, and so he's like, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother with you. I'm not going to get any help from you. And he's mm. like, yeah, just moves on. But yeah, so like, You've you've kind of established that McLean senses that something's up. This is more than just a robbery. These guys are are quite serious. Um, the chief of airport police isn't willing to help him out, so he kind of takes matters into his own hands and he gets the guy's prints. Like he just bluffs his way in, grabs the guy's prints, um, and sends them off to to Big Al out in L.A. He has to yeah. fax them to him because <laughs> fucking fax machines, man. <laughs> it's great. I- I could not fucking believe that Big Al in Die Hard 2 is 38. What, the actor? Yes. Fuck me. I always thought when he was in Die Hard, it was about 50-something. Yeah. And then uh, in Die Hard 2, I was just like, I, was just like yeah, I wonder how old these guys are. I wonder how, Will- how old Willis is. Because you can... See that he's, you know, this is actually quite a young Willis. So it's like, oh, I wonder how young, you know, I wonder how old he is. I was thinking, yeah, he's got to be around mid thirties, and yeah, he's thirty five. So I was like, I wonder how 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 old Al is. So I look on, it's just like he's born like three years before. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? He's thirty eight in Die Hard Two. That is insane. That is God. no, no, but true. But yeah, that would mean he was like thirty, what thirty six, in in the first Die Hard, maybe even thirty five yeah. at the time of filming. Yeah, like fuck, that's younger than us. Oh yeah, <laughs> damn. And it's just, I'm like, holy shit, that guy looks like eighty. Maybe not that old, but yeah, like if I had to guess his age, I'd be like mid to late forties easily. Dude, have you, you, know, have you seen like an older the guy. from Coming to America too? Yeah, Eddie Murphy. He Eddie is an Murphy immortal is. vampire, man. Hasn't aged a day. No. Nah. I, I don't know what. It's not, there's not a crack. I know, the, I know the phrase, black don't crack, but fucking there is nothing. Yeah. Nothing cracking on that guy's face. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. And they got whatever. He, he must just have, yeah, he must have good genetics, but yeah, Big Al wasn't so lucky. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he looks. Maybe he looks exactly the same now, though. Maybe he just hasn't aged. Like Big I don't Al. Know. I don't know he's aged. <laughs> oh, okay. He definitely has aged. Is he but still yeah, a big lad? Oh, he's got bigger. Yeah, he's got bigger. Right. He's still, you could you could tell he was always going to get bigger if that was you know that's what he's like at mid thirties. You know, he's either going to be like gaunt thin now, yeah. or uh, no, he's 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 doing all right though. God bless his heart. But yeah, yeah, when I saw those uh, coming to America, I thought it was the images from the first film. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, these are the images. These are the first images from the sequels. Because my mate sent it to me, and I was like, right, either Eddie Murphy's an immortal vampire, or he's been CGI'd to fuck in that image. Yeah. yeah. And he pointed out, like, yeah, I don't think they got the budget for CGI in this film. Like, <laughs> this is gonna be, this is gonna be back to basics. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be back to back. There's no Tony Stark. Uh, look, we're showing off this new tech that we've got uh, from from DreamWorks or whoever it is who does their uh, uh, their you know their um, CGI computer animated stuff. No, 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 no. Mm. God bless you, Eddie Murphy. Just the uh, for the guys in chat. Obviously, we will uh, we'll obviously do all the super chats. Um, we'll get through every one of them. It's just we tend to do that towards the end, like once we've discussed the film, so we don't have to keep stopping um, and starting again. Because um, we go on we go on enough tangents as it is. I think <laughs> with these <Yeah>. films, <laughs> well, we, we do know we we've killed the real Boba Fett as well. Yeah, <laughs> you mean you mean Doomcock that we're talking about? 
uh, last week, or the week before, we're talking about, oh, I, I thought he died a couple of years ago, and Duke Cox said, yeah, I thought he died a couple of years ago, and then chat were like, no, no, he's still alive, he's 75, two weeks later, he, he dies today. <laughs> <laughs> so we killed, Fucking put the curse on it, man. Yeah, we killed Boba Fett. I'm sorry, guys. I'm no, really sorry. but we've we've got the the slightly more rotund Boba Fett now um, on yeah. on the Mandalorian. So I love Dad Bod Boba Fett. He's great. Yeah, <laughs> just giving now fucks wearing his wearing his um, uh, Marlon Brando uh, Apocalypse Now dress. <laughs> When he was wearing that, I was like, "Ah, he looks. He looks like he's all right. You know, he's he's mm. he's withstood the test of time, not too bad." And then when he gets the armor on, I'm like, "Oh no, no! You I couldn't have given him something else." Yeah, he's had barbecue. <laughs> yeah, there's no place to hide in armor like that. Like if you've no, if you've got a gut, but... they're gonna see it. <laughs> it makes me think I got a chance. I got. A chance. <laughs> There's a, there's a space for you as a bounty hunter yet, man. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I might be rolling into battle, but you know, got a jetpack. <laughs> no, I'm just rolling in, mate. I'm just rolling in on my side. Like, the, the jetpack tries. You try to take off with it, and it's like oh, I don't have enough power. <laughs> I'm just on, the, on my belly, just spinning around. <laughs> I've given it all I've got, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> just pull the trigger. <laughs> blowed up a fat. That's oh, what I've been on. Where the hell did we get oh. to with this? Um oh yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> there's a movie we were talking about. Yeah, so um he gets the guy's prints and he sends them off to Big Al, who identifies him as a, a special ops soldier who was in Honduras and he got mm. killed. So um he's He's like been declared dead already. So there's clearly something going on here. This guy's like some kind of like um, special ops black bag dude. Yeah. Um, so again, that clues in McLean that something something's happening. Um, and I think that's when it switches over to like a church just at the edge of the airport where, you know, there's like one old bastard like looking after it. I don't know why. Uh, and, um, you know... <laughs> It's just like the 80s. Well, no, this is 1990. Well, this was made in 89, 88, 89. But probably 88, really. It probably was made pretty much straight after the success of Die Hard, straight into filming of the second one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in the 80s, they were just always so sick. There'd always be some nice old deer. And in this case, there was like two or three in the movie. Some nice old deer that would just set up their own death. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come into my church. Oh, I feel this place will just be the death of me. It yeah. will be. <laughs> yeah, because the guy, the the, the dude's like, uh, uh, feels like a piece of me is dying with this church. Yeah. It's like, oh, you had to say that, didn't you? It's like, oh no, they're going to kill you now. And again, yeah, they gun him down, and it's really like um, gratuitous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you get to see, like there's, you get to see all the bullets hitting him. There's blood that goes spraying everywhere, and he he falls backwards in slow motion. All the rest of it, like this movie, always shows you people getting killed. And then they have this, what they think is a joke, where his arms like on the on the pew, and then he goes, yeah, and women, <laughs> his arm fell down when he died. The old guy got killed. It's funny. Yeah, it's funny. Look at his arm got wiggly wonkly and then it fell down. And his eyes are like wide open and he's dead as well. So it's just like he's not at peace. It's just like, oh my God. This guy's blood all over his face. Blood blood splattered (laughs) over his face. Yeah. You bastard. How dare you? Killing old people, man. That's that's what they did in movies back then. They got the old deer and the, the hostess is just like, we're just like British Whale, darling. We'll get you in. The, we'll get you there in the end. No, you won't. You're gonna get blowed the fuck up. <laughs> I, I think that's an optimistic appraisal of British Rail, To be fair, like they, they often don't fucking get you there. <laughs> you just be cancelled, and you have to <laughs> get a taxi. I'm afraid there's leaves on the line, so we can't run today. Yeah. Fucking leaves <laughs> on the line. The train's like 300 tons. For fuck's sake, you can't get past leaves. Really? I I know somebody whose job is to clear leaves off the line. 
That is a true story as well. <laughs> that, is, that is what his job is to get leaves off train tracks. So, like, if 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 a train gets cancelled, that's because that guy has failed in his job. Like, he just couldn't clear those leaves fast enough. Probably. Damn. This ain't that's Japan. a big. <laughs> so, it's a big responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> You know, in Japan, if, if a train is even like 30 seconds late, the fucking uh, attendants are coming out com- in a fucking, uh, you know. <laughs> Harakiri. <laughs> you know, we've been lucky if the train turns up two hours fucking late. We're coming in, the guy will be leaning out of the fucking front cabin with a cigarette. All right, you fuckers, we got here. Fuck off. You don't look at me like that. <laughs> Fuck it. That's, that's, <laughs> our, that's our system with trains in the UK. It's terrible, man. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. It's uh, for anyone in the Ameri- in the states. Yeah, the the British train system is shit. Don't ever go on it. Yeah. Um, but uh, fuck, where did I get to with this? <laughs> we got, we got to the oh church. the old guy. Yeah, old people getting brutally murdered. Yeah, old people, yeah, old people setting up their own deaths before coronavirus even got here. This is just bullets had to suffice back in the nineties. <laughs> 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 I've 79 years on this planet. I'm going to get down by terrorists today. This is great. <laughs> this is how I wanted to go out. No boxy fucking virus is going to get me. Oh, oh man. So, uh, yes, yeah, so these guys who've taken over this church, they're obviously there for a reason, and they, they immediately set up a, a command center with all the, the bleepy bloopy buttons and, and machines and screens and stuff. It all looks very, like... Very techy, so clearly they're something, um, and they they cut through all the power lines outside. So it's like they're hacking into the airport's systems. Um, yeah, and that's that's when I think McLean goes up to the um, like the control room of the airport to like report on what he's found. And he's like, you know, because I guess n- none of them thought to do a fingerprint check on this this guy that got killed. Uh, well, they, but they he did. Do, they, they do it at the morgue. They take the fingerprints at the morgue, so mm. it was it was McLean actually getting the jump, being a better better policeman actually, <laughs> being a more thorough policeman, considering there was a a, a whole airport at stake here. Um, so yeah, instead of them going through the procedures pre pre nine eleven procedures, so basically having a fag and uh, donuts, that's a cigarette. By the way, <laughs> the <Yeah. music> break, <laughs> that's what we call them here. They weren't going outside for man on man anal sex, and they're going outside <laughs> for a cigarette. We call them the we call them fags in the UK. That's that's slang for it. A quick ciggy, maybe I'll have to say in the future. As Americans be like, what, what did he? What did that British guy just say? Oh my god, he's just like yeah. said a where is he? So, yeah, if, uh, if a British yeah. person says they want to bomb a fag, it's not what you yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? But I was watching Columbo. I was watching a bit of Columbo earlier, and he says to a guy, can I bomb a ciggy? Can I bomb a cigarette? And I was just like, you are lucky you're not in the UK because you will be bumming a fag. Hmm. Ooh. Moving on. Ah, uh, don't you love it? Different cultures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he gets the fingerprints, doesn't he? And he work. They work out that these guys are dead, but they're not dead. Yeah. Um, the uh, the girl at the check in desk wants to just basically straight up says, "Do you want to go fuck <laughs> like right <yeah>. now?" <laughs> yeah. In about an hour's time, would you like to insert your penis in my vagina? <laughs> How about some good old fashioned sex? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to fuck? Are you John McLean DTF? Because I'm yeah. a slight little receptionist who is in control of her sexuality for all the people out there that are going to get mad at me would like to fuck you. <laughs> and he's just like, he does that, he does that like. Was Bruce Willis the we, the the creator of Duckface? Because he always does this, doesn't he? He always goes. He had the smirk. Yeah, it's kind of he's it, it, kind of like. Kind of turn his head and then do this little 
like lips together sort of oh, yeah it's the patented bruce willis smirk yeah well it looks like if i ate bruce willis then that's the smirk that he would do. <laughs> <laughs> with his wedding ring on. but it's, like, it's just like what and then you know they see the wedding ring and they're just like oh well <laughs> nearly got laid yeah <laughs> And this girl's like clearly ten years younger than him, and absolutely oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, she's like, yeah, you can tell she's like early to mid twenties, twenty three to twenty six ish. You know, uh, probably. I'm gonna look at. Oh no, I don't know who did it have Trump behind counter. Yeah. <laughs> counter fuck. It's like airport slag number one. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're about, yeah airport slag number two, number three, and number. <laughs> That's just so many, man. Yeah, just all just dripping after McLean, the whole lot of them. Snail trails <laughs> everywhere around the airport. Just I love how around. um when you when you go up to the, the plane, because Holly basically spends the entire movie just sat on a fucking plane, like she doesn't get to do yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh but she's stuck there with Dick Thornburg <laughs> from the first movie. I don't think she just starts just calling him a, she just really starts emphasizing dick. Yeah, Fine. it's like that is <laughs> that is your name, name, isn't it, Dick? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 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 the bit where uh, towards the end, where she just comes into the toilet and tases him, yeah. I was howling, just fucking howling with laughter. <laughs> I, I love the bit where they. Well, I love the bit where they have to do an emergency landing and the, the stewardesses are helping him back to his seat and he's like sobbing and crying. <laughs> so <he's> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh dear. <laughs> that was just that was great. The whole the whole airport the the, the whole airplane sequence is I mean the, the hostesses, they were they were making sure that Dick was in his place. You know, when he was <laughs> in first class, and he's just there going, I, but I, I should have still get my first class meal, even if I, I get that you're overbooked, but I should at least get my first class meal. And it's like, sit the fuck down, Dick. You know, sit down, shut up in your new chair. It's like, wow. I did, I did wonder about that, right? Because, like, when Holly calls John, like, she's kind of almost at the end of her flight. Like, she's, she's on the way to the airport. She'll maybe be, like, another hour or something. So she's been on it for like four or five hours easily. So where the fuck has Dick been sitting this whole time when he's been told to go into economy class? He's has he just been hiding in the deer. toilet the whole time or what? Just sat on an old deer. That's another old person dead. <laughs> he's just sat and suffocated another old deer in the first class. And they <laughs> realised that he was could get a seatbelt over. When they were just about to start to, to land, so they're just like, "Why? Oh, he's fucking sat on an old woman! Come on, <laughs> she's red now. She's suffocated now. Come on, taking you around the back. You're we we told you about this, Dick. <laughs> Naughty Dick, bad Dick. <laughs> Sit down. But that's when I was like, "Oh, Holly, hello." Yeah, she's uh, she looks good. Not bad. Yeah. Get those eyebrows smoothed. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Jones again. So, uh, yeah, so McLean knows that shit's about to go down and he, he goes up to the control room to like warn them about it. Because mm. um, I guess you can just get into the control room of a major airport without anyone stopping you. Like that's that's what you can do. Um, again, Lorenzo's there just like, ah, oh, McLean, you son of a bitch. Yeah, you fuck, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> you fucking fuck. asshole. Fuck, 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 give us a cigarette. <laughs> it's like everything McLean's saying is like totally logical and like sensible. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah so things, I remember as a kid, these were the things that infuriated me. Like, but he's telling, he's saying the right things. Why aren't you listening to him? Yeah. Yeah. People need to get so shot. Like, that's why. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And he's just, he's put in there as an obstacle kind of character who's, who's just going to argue with anything McLean says because he's a dick. Mm. But um, yeah, so the 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 manager of the airport, I think his name's Trudeau, 
Um, he's yeah, a bit more sympathetic, yeah. and he, he like actually listens to McLean, and he's like, "Yeah, you've got a point. Like, we need to like tighten up our security. This this could be uh, this could be real." But before they can actually do anything, all their equipment just suddenly goes offline. Um, all the lights go out on the the airfield. Um, and they've got no control over anything. So it's like they've suddenly um, been disconnected from their own airport. Uh, and that's when you get the, you know, um, that's when the trap is sprung and the bad guys mm. have taken over um, and they get a a call on like their, their comm system. And that's when, um, I think his name's Colonel Stewart in this, like yeah. William Sadler's character. Yeah, yeah he, he contacts them and he's like, look, I've taken over. Um, you, you can't, like land any of your planes now and uh, we are in control now and um that pretty much tells them like the the planes that are currently in the air over the airport they are now um like hostages effectively because they can't land but they don't have enough fuel to go anywhere else and so yeah um you 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 can't fuck with us <laughs> and basically what they want is uh a flight that's coming in from another country. I think it's meant to be Valverde. That's usually the place they use in yeah. 1980s <laughs> movies, um, where it's got like a, a deposed dictator on board, and they want that plane. They want the guy on board, um, and that's basically their their objective is to get him so they can they can fly him back. Because I think when you you find out his backstory mm -hmm. is like he was he was installed by like the the US military to to fight the communists in whatever country he's in uh, but he became mm -hmm. like a, di a corrupt dictator and so he was deposed um and it became like a big scandal essentially uh, I, I think this is the reason why die hard 2 isn't looked up to as much as the others because obviously alan rickman was just god in in die hard um and and then we had um What's my jiggy in, in Die Hard 3? Um, Alfred. <laughs> Alfred from Batman uh, is uh, in, in Die Hard 3. But Die Hard 2, the villains never really fleshed out or came across as a mega threat. Because it, Sadler's really the guy who's planning everything, but it's it's the dictator which they're trying to make it appear as if he's the the big dog he's the one who's paying them he's the one that organized this but it's like you you know you just literally some some sort of like gringo guy uh with a with a cuban <clears throat> <throat> i i think i think the the way i interpret it in the film is that William Sadler's character is the actual mastermind behind it. Like he's not being employed by the the dictator dude. He's actually choosing to do this because he's like some kind of, uh, you know, he's a, a fervent sort of anti-communist, and that's what he sees this guy mm -hmm. as because he he was there to fight them, uh, and that's why he's willing to to do anything it takes to get this guy back in power in whatever country he came from to fight those mm -hmm. guys. Uh, and so he's the guy who dreamed up the entire operation. And it's like the the dictator himself, I think, is just like a, almost like a, a MacGuffin that he's yeah. playing for. Because the guy doesn't really do much by himself, but he's just there to um, to manipulate around. Whereas I think William Sadler's character is the, the main guy. What's that, sorry? A soldier very kindly lets him kill him. Yeah. <laughs> for no yeah. reason. I never understood what he did. To make that happen, no, like how um, he somehow gets behind him and, and strangles him to death. Yeah, because when he's like, "Well, can you like, you know, can you take off my restraints?" No, can't do that. I'm afraid, General. Okay, can you light my cigar? Yeah, just leans forward, lights his cigar, and then sits back down. How the hell did you get behind him yeah. to stick your thing and then throttle him? And why is there only one person looking after you? <clears throat> in the back of a in the back of a uh a plane a big cargo plane as well why is one person you would he would be under multiple armed guard but plot yeah, needs because, to happen. okay yeah the, the 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 script needs the rest of the plot to happen but yeah. yeah if this was real like there would be a whole platoon of soldiers in there because you would never have one guy guarding him just in case that one guy isn't loyal so you'd at least have several people yeah. to watch him and watch each other. Uh, or if that guy but, had a 
I had a heart attack, had an epileptic fit, you know, had something that would incapacitate him naturally. <laughs> so you've got one guy looking after the most feared man in South America and then two pilots. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's it. That's a compliment. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Plot yeah. needs to happen. We get it. Okay. Let's move on. It it does, yeah. Um so he he's on his he's on route to um to Dulles Airport. Um, fuck knows why, because I'm sure if he's from a Central American country, there's other airports that are way closer, but whatever. Like, to be going. <laughs> it's like, where are you going, by the way? I mean, I assume the FBI or something would take him in, um, or the, the Justice Department, so... Where's you know, Langley, though? Langley's... That's in Washington, D.C. Oh, it is in Washington, D.C. Okay. The, <laughs> the headquarters of the FBI, as well, is in D.C., so... I mean, maybe okay. it makes sense for him to go there. Um, yeah, maybe they're going to haul him straight to the White House so the president could beat the shit out of him <laughs> yeah. personally. Like. Yeah, because they wanted <laughs> they wanted Ronnie Reagan to punch him to death. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry before he forgets who you are. Yeah, that's how we deal with democracy in America, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, you're the bestest ever. You know the the irony is that this guy would probably be portrayed as the hero if this film was made now. <laughs> like, well, it's like, yeah, I'm like, Sadler, he's like anti-communist. I'm thinking we could do with him now. Actually, we really could do with Sadler right now. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Let him loose on come, it come back, rip. William Sadler. All is forgiven. Yeah. Be be butt naked again. Be butt yeah, but be butt naked, but be not butt naked on Twitter. You know, get behind that keyboard, wax yourself up, be as naked as you want. <laughs> tear, some, tear some keyboard warriors apart, dude, with your your vicious one-liners. Oh, I good. heard that Sadler was a bit of a twat. Bit of a twat. <laughs> you know, what I've seen is what a fuck your mum. Ah! Oh! There one keyboard warrior. <laughs> what I love about this scene as well is that, like, <laughs> they they recognize, like, um, you know. They've been given a couple of minutes to brief all the planes overhead before their comms are cut, and then yeah. that's it. They're they're out. Um, and so McLean's like, "Well, we have to do something about this." And Lorenzo goes into full on "fuck you, John McLean" mode, and he's like, "You're out of here." And yeah. for some reason, that that news reporter shows up as well, and every single character in this movie tells her to fuck off. <laughs> like it's great. <laughs> Everyone hates her. <laughs> I just like this. It's awesome because she's just this annoying woman, and just everyone is literally, literally just going fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> because she she finds really doesn't she? She says, "John, is there anything I can do?" He says, "Yeah, fuck off." Yeah, because she meets she meets William Sadler at one point, and she's like, "Oh, Colonel Stewart, can we have a couple of words?" And he's like, "Yeah, you can have two. Fuck and off." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And she becomes the one at the end that helps save the day for McLean. Yeah. So she gets she gets uh she gets a little arc herself. She realizes that I might have been told to fuck off all film, but I learned the meaning of Christmas. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just at the end like Look at that! Look at that couple in love. Which ten minutes earlier asked him if he wanted to fucking impregnate me. But look yeah. at them in love. Isn't Christmas great? Christmas. I just want to see her with a sign. It's like we'll have baby for story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll open. We'll spread legs for story. <laughs> um, I, I'm just looking. Like, I'll do it for free, darling. I'll do it for a fax. I was looking at a chat here, a super chat um, from Claudio Rogojan saying um, Colonel Stewart is actually getting paid. John asks him how much drug money is Esperanza paying him to bust him out, and he laughs. He's doing it for money. Um, I don't know because he he does um, he makes a couple of speeches late in the movie saying that um, you know the soldiers that have been serving under him they've they've won a victory for their way of life. Um, and that um, you know they need Esperanza um, to to further the cause for them. So I think John was maybe just clutching at straws when he's asked about drug money. Um, I I, th I don't well, think the guy was motivated by. Him. We yeah, know that. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, because clearly they're not going to be welcome in the yeah. states. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of super chats, you just had a hundred dollar one just come through. Oh damn! Uh, obviously, <laughs> I'll get to that one. Um, oh, sorry, I was just looking yeah, at my my my, my, oh, my yeah, super yeah. chat stream is a little bit behind, but yeah, obviously, I'll get to all of the super chats um, as we go through. Um, yeah, so. Um, I've just noticed yeah, so the air- there's been a lot of um, critical drinkers really handsome and as looks like a teddy bear <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that a lot of that been going on in the chat it's, it's all just lighting you see like if I was under different lighting I would look like as and he, he would look like me <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got studio lighting you've got fucking movie lighting you twat that's what yeah. <laughs> I've got nice camera takes off studio lighting. Yeah, you've got you got <laughs> you got generations lighting when it all went weird. Oh yeah, yeah. So it all went moody then and dark. Yeah. yeah. What? This isn't ten forward. Where are my fucking lights? Put my fucking lights back. Yeah. Um, As it's Shrek lightning. <laughs> 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 one, one guy saying, honestly, drinkers drinkers' face is really pointy and as is really spherical. <laughs> <laughs> look, at him, you got a pointy face. <laughs> we got we are the we are the anti face brothers. <laughs> Thing is, well, you you've been kicking it at the gym recently, so I imagine you're going to look pretty different soon. <laughs> give me give me two years, all right. Give yeah. me two years, and then we'll talk. Yeah, going going yeah. to the gym and, and actually advancing are two completely different things altogether. And I've yeah. only just you know started because of the really because the huge gap that we had in the thing. So yeah. So yeah, don't don't be planning on any changes for a while, folks. Yeah, I'm t- I mean the I'm thing. T- 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 on. Once you, uh, yeah, once you get the momentum going, though, you'll you'll make good progress. It's just getting that first start. Well, if really, don't, if they don't shut us down again, yeah, because we're we're sticking in tier three up here. I mean, London's tier two. The bigger you know, the capital of the fucking Britain is tier two, but here in my sleepy village in the middle of fucking nowhere, we're tier three for some reason. Just your uh, kind of area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all round, all round, everywhere around, uh-huh. everywhere you go around, leads everywhere. Fucking tier three, tier three, tier three. Me, middle of nowhere, I've, tier three. I've uh, I've accidentally added people's uh, comments into the the stream. I didn't mean to do it. Just have to click it. <laughs> click the same comment again, and it goes off. Oh, but it's really far back now. Fuck. Oh, just click another. Click another one, then it will yeah. replace it and click that off. There you go. That's how you do that. All right. Here we go. This one's perfect. Ahoy. <laughs> Damn, it's really slow. Oh, there we go. You might want to uh, wrench me, dude. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Uh. <clears throat> Right, okay, yeah, so the airport shut down and uh, Sadler and his mates have got control over everything. So um, the question is, what the fuck are they going to do now? John gets ejected from the, the control room um, and, and he's put into an elevator. They're, they've been chucked out by Lorenzo. Um, but then he stops the elevator and he just fucking climbs out the roof. That's where he tells like, her to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she, she's like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you climbing out? Uh, and you do get a great little line for him where he's like, oh, it's okay. I've done this before. Yeah. <laughs> In Die Hard 1. Yeah. Dude, you want to stick, stick, a, stick a wrench on me in the chat. I'll say hi. Uh, stick a wrench on me. Hold on. Say something on chat. Yeah, I just said hi. All right. I'm just waiting for it to come through here. Uh, oh yeah, there you are. 
That should have come true. Uh, come on, hurry up. Yeah, sorry, it's a wee bit slow. Um, Is that I? Uh, all right, I've got you as a moderator. Okay. Dish, dish, dish. Bye. <laughs> right. Naughty person dealt with. Okay, cool. I didn't even notice it because I, <clears throat> when I'm just in the StreamYard sort of uh, part of it, I just get like uh, an abbreviated version of the stream, so I don't always see everything. Um, yeah, Blippity Bloop here says, we all know you have a pair of sunglasses behind the eyes, drinker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have my, sorry I don't have my, uh, my sunglasses on today. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 then people would have been like, ah, oh, it is drinker. It truly mm. is drinker. I, if they were nearby, I would go get them. I think I left them in the car or something, so fuck it, I can't be bothered going that far. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, where did we get to? Oh, yeah, so John climbs out the, the roof of the elevator and just kind of mm. disappears into the bowels of the airport. Um, yeah. And that's when he uh, he runs into Marv, who's like the, the janitor of the place. And he, he's just this weird fucking guy. Um who who yeah, kind of get like some on the spectrum uh crazy OCD guy that lives in the bowels of the airport by the looks of it. It's like okay, is he qu like quasimodo, but now it's wrong with his face or they have these weird this it's like the whole Marv thing which is that's that's one of the things I think they could have just trimmed off the film. Uh, I, there wasn't really a need for Marv. Um, he doesn't really do much. He's just there to kind of show McLean where things are because I guess McLean yeah. can't read signs or anything. But McLean could have just, they could have just had, had no Marv. He finds the, the things that he needs. You know, he finds the blueprint area. He just gets the blueprints out. Bang. Okay. I've worked out where I need to be. Take the blueprint with you and use that as a map to, to go through he, the. He, he he does uh, he does have a useful purpose later because he had found one of the radios that belonged to um, Stuart's men uh, with with the code punched into it so they could actually listen in on their comms. Uh, so that that kind of is useful because I think it would be too it would be too inconvenient if McLean had found it early on in the story. So I guess they needed a reason why he doesn't see it until later. But yeah, I think mean, McLean could have taken a guy out just after he punched it in. So you know. There were, there were ways that they could have got around that. Like I said, I think they just needed to cut off about 15 minutes, 20 minutes from this film. And yeah, it is. A, it's a bit long. Stuff, yeah. I, I think probably 10 of those minutes are just waiting for those grenades to go off in the plane <laughs> late in the movie. <laughs> they are the worst grenades ever. I mean, could you imagine if they were used in an actual fucking war and you threw them at the enemy? They'd have about five minutes to move or throw them back at you. They had enough to take them out individually and just ping them back. And they had enough time to pick them back up and ping them back yeah. in. And then they had enough time to pick them back up and ping them back out. And then they're like, oh, should I catch it and throw it back? Or should I run now? It has been 48 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was a very um, clumsy scene. That one, um, obviously, yeah. we can talk about that when we get to it. Yeah. Um, but uh, the the last thing that McLean had heard before they um, before they threw him out of the control room was that uh, they were going to go to a place called the Annex Skywalk because mm. um, one of the engineers has had a plan to like use the antenna dish there to talk to all the planes. So he's like, look, we can patch into that. It's like this system that the enemy doesn't really know about. And um, we can we can talk to the planes and warn them of what's happening. So like, great. Um, McLean knows he needs to get there because he, he can sense that there's going to be an ambush or something. There'll be trouble there. Um, and so he uses Marv to, to find the way there. And for some reason, the quickest way to get there is to crawl through an air duct. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> that can't be a quick way to get around an airport. 
No. But it was a it's a good way to uh allow John McClane to have a nice entrance after the uh the crew had taken out all of the uh guards. Yep. So yeah. And poor Patrick. Uh after his little cameo is the first person to fall foul to uh to John McClane's pew pew. Pew pew gun. Yeah. Pew pew time. So the engineer, I think his name's Barnes. Um, they he goes out to the Skywalk uh, area with like a SWAT team for protection. He's going to like patch into it, uh, but they get ambushed by the T one thousand, and the team, yeah. the SWAT team, gets wiped out. Um, and Barnes is about to get executed as well, but then McLean like comes in, and uh, I think he drops like a, a air vent on him, and then shoots the shit out of him, so he gets killed. Uh, and then he he kills everyone else because you know. A cop well, can take on like in the middle of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling. It's the last you thing they'll expect. He rolls into the middle of the floor, wide in the open for everyone to shoot at him. And he's just <laughs> really, and then trying to do some rolls around. It's just like there, there's a bit where like one okay. of the enemies is on top of like a gantry. Um mm. where like it's about, you know. 50 feet high and he's shooting down at McLean with like a machine gun and he can't hit him for some reason and McLean's spending ages trying to knock this thing over like he's shoulder barging it uh, and like none of the bullets will hit him just great great like 80s action stuff oh, the yeah, enemy yeah, can't yeah. shoot for shit yeah just storm stormtrooper type of uh, a business going on but it's like he's shooting down at him but then he's like hiding right underneath and then he's knocking him and he's trying to shoot him, but he doesn't appear to be at the side that he's shooting, but he is because that's the way he's knocking it. So it's all a bit weird about where McLean actually is at various points in this uh, knocking the thing. And they just splats, the guy falls off and the whole thing just splatters him. Yeah, a very obvious mannequin as well that it lands on, <laughs> you know, because the, the limbs start just flailing around everywhere <laughs> when it lands on him. <laughs> like a scarecrow just gets hit and the straw just compacts yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so he wipes out the, the team that was doing the ambushing because he's that good um, but the, the antenna array gets blown up because the, Look, the guy's jam gun bit was great I thought the jam gun bit was great because his gun was jammed throughout the whole thing. And then he unjams it, tries to get it going again, jams. Then he goes for it again a third time, puts it, you know, takes out the clip, puts it back in, pulls it back in, jams again. So I think that whole jammed gun thing was actually quite, quite clever. And Mm. he's just like, I'm going to fuck you up. And then uh, McLean, who's pinned on the ground, then he gets his handgun from the conveyor belt, and he's running, the other guy's running to try and get to the gun in time, but then he just grabs it. Yeah, nice little tense scene there. Yeah, he's, he's trapped. He's, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it, it's it's fun. It's fun. And, um, yeah, like, the, the antenna gets blown up, and, uh, you know, the, what's his name? William Sadler mm. is like, look, you know, you we warned you not to do this. You, you, um, you fucked around with us and now you need to be punished. And so he, um, he contacts one of the planes that's piloted by miles O'Brien from DS nine. Um, and that's the one where everyone's got like a stereotypical British accent. Everyone talks terribly posh. And who's the pilot? Um, O'Brien from DS nine. Yeah. Call me uh, Brian. Yeah. Miles O'Brien from, uh, DS nine next generation. And yes, he's doing his, he's Irish, but he's doing his, everyone's just so British, aren't they? I say, <laughs> we need to land quickly, the tea's getting cold up here. We've Come run on. out of biscuits. Yeah, if they did an external shot, I'm sure it'd just be like, terribly British airline. <laughs> so British. Yeah. I yeah. say, we're going to land soon. Don't worry, darling. If we like British Rail, we'll get you there eventually. Because that was actually British Rail's motto at the time we'll get you well there. we'll get you there eventually <laughs> yeah, not eventually <laughs> yeah, be eventually on the end <laughs> yeah british rail's motto we'll, we, we might we might get you there might not yeah but, <laughs> did anyone bomb me a fact <laughs> yeah i mean that's basically ryanair's um like logo isn't it we'll get you somewhere yeah yeah that's 2020s though ryanair <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> or 2019, so I think last time they were allowed to fly. We'll, we'll get you somewhere. Yeah. Not exactly yeah. sure where, but somewhere. It might yeah. not be the airport you wanted, but uh, you'll get there. But of course, the the, uh, the hostess is saying it to them, this lovely old dear who's very nervous. She's like, don't worry, don't worry, darling. We get you there eventually. Boom! <laughs> Dead old lady. Uh, this is a really good scene, actually. I like what they do because it. I, I think in um, in movies like this, you always need like a demonstration of the power of whatever yes. uh, weapon the enemy's got, whether it's like a, right. a bio weapon or what. Yeah, yeah. You got to prove how it works, and so in this case, they they change the sort of instrument landing system so the ground appears to be lower than it actually is, and the plane essentially flies straight into the runway and crashes. Uh, McLean tries to help or stop it with like a flare, but it's not enough. Um, and you know, it, it's kind of um, it's really well played out. Like you know, you get mm. all the, the 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 plane explodes; it goes off like a fucking nuclear bomb, despite the fact that it's supposed to be out of fuel. Um, yeah. And <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> it hit the ground. It went. <laughs> <laughs> We've got no fuel. You fucking. They pipe the co-pilot, but you fucking liar. You yeah. absolute fucking bella. Well, I didn't want my tea to get cold, did I? EastEnders is on. It has I think it's, yes. it's like, uh, we've got no fuel, but that cargo of C4 is starting to go off. So uh, we yeah. better land. That cargo of grenades, frag grenades. Yeah. <laughs> it's looking a bit dodgy at the back. <laughs> Someone's pulled the pin. They'll go off in at least 30 minutes. <laughs> Nitroglycerine that we're that we're transporting. <laughs> that off the plane. Sure it's, go wrong. it's kind of McLean that causes this to happen, though, because he taunts uh, Colonel Stewart over the radio, and he's like, you know, so what? Like, lesson one starts with killing policemen, and like, what's lesson two? The the neutron bomb. And he's like, oh, I think we can find something in between. Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't know. Maybe if you hadn't like pushed him so hard, he wouldn't have done this, but. Yeah, like the the plane crashes, everyone on board gets killed. It's it's a very harrowing scene. Like John McClane even finds a fucking doll in the wreckage afterwards. There's always a doll. Always a burning doll. Yeah. And that uh, just made me think, well done, John. You got a kitty killed. Yep. And an they old lady. Like a twat. Yeah, an old lady and some kids. And Cole yep. Meany. Oh no, he teleported himself off, so he was all right. He's fine. He's fine. You know. Uh, but yeah. Teleport so he, Enterprise. And Doc I mean, knows you, he teleported back to DS9 and Bashir was just like, how was your, your trip back in time, O'Brien? And he was just like, fucking don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> let's, it let's just not go there. Fucking wrong. Okay. I landed <laughs> in the middle. I was there just flying the plane, having a gay old time. Fucking terrorist attack. Planes... Yeah, this, this twat, this twat messed with my instruments, made me land, crash the plane into the ground. Yeah, dick. Yeah, it wasn't a holodeck either, you know. Yeah, looks back in the records, two hundred and fifty-four yeah. people perished. On the <laughs> You're like reporting to sick base. Like, have you got anything for erasing short-term memory at all? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cisco, uh, uh, Brian, yeah, Cisco wants to see in his office. <gasps> <laughs> Oh, not a gun! This is the last fucking that traveler. If that tra right, I'm gonna say that Cisco, Cisco, it was the traveler, and he's touching, he's touching Crusher, he's touching Wesley. I saw him do it. Thank you, Miles. So Brian, we all we'll deal with that. That's uh that traveler did have a creepy look about him. You know, he's he's definitely been me too. <laughs> He's been me three, four, and five. Yeah. <laughs> I take a partner and I travel around the universe with them. Have you seen my gigantic fin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great though if that was fucking Miles O'Brien. Just just going but doing one of those little back in time episodes. Just going horribly wrong. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How did it go, Miles? Just no, just don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. Yeah. Oh, it's just made me realize there is like, oh my god, um 
What? Oh, shit. There's a show which is in the same universe as Star Wars. Oh, I need to think. There's actually a really weird, like a film, a very well-known film, and because of something that's said in that film, it's actually in the same universe as Star Wars. I need to, I need to remember. I know. I need to remember. I can't remember which one, which one it was. I mean, I know E.T. is apparently in the same universe e. as Star yeah, Wars. E. Yeah, E.T. Oh, is yeah, it? Yeah, E.T. E.T. is in the same universe as Star Wars. Yeah. I think it was Anna that told me that. Like, if you look really closely in one of the Senate scenes, like, there's some E.T.'s, some E.T.'s. in, in yeah. like, one of the, the hollow pod things. Like, pff, never would yeah. have seen it. Yeah. E.T. There you go. The chat were on top of it as well. E.T. There you go. Yeah. yeah. E.T. is... Yep. Uh, same same universe as uh, Star Wars. Holy mm. Yeah. Uh yeah, so the planes crashed and everyone on board's dead and John is sad. Uh and so they're, they're he cries. He cries, so yeah. Crying. Mm. John sheds manly tears. You know? Because <clears throat> he just Cause he knows two hundred and seventy eight people killed. Yeah, because he knows he's fucking responsible for it, asshole. Whoops. Yeah, we've all had bad days out, you know. But it's a good demonstration of what uh, what Sadler can do and how dangerous he is and how ruthless he is. Like he's got no qualms about killing hundreds of people, you know, to to achieve his aims. So <clears throat> he's a bad guy. Bad um, guy, and and McLean's a good guy because he keeps actually saying that in the film. You're the bad guys, and I'm the good guy. <laughs> Yeah, I think genuinely the audience needs to be reminded of that. It's like he brutal, yeah. brutally murders people in conveyor belts, crushes their heads, guns them down, yeah. Yeah, gets civilians them, killed. Yeah, killed a plane of people, but John McClane actually goaded him into doing it, so they equal itself out. Sadler's not killed anyone else. McClane has killed at least seven people up till now. Yeah. I'm the I'm the good guy, and he's been offered sex. Yeah, and he's turned it's it down man. though, because because he's, he's a married him. man, so he's virtuous, <laughs> virtuous man. <laughs> Turn him off. I don't. Chain down. <clears throat> I don't think Bruce Willis would have turned it down. No, it was just him. I saw a picture. I saw a picture of uh, his his current wife. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And uh, then there's, I, there was a, like a news article because it you know displays all the various things. And there was a news article, and it had like his current wife, and it had her next to Demi Moore, and they're both brunettes. Uh, they don't look particularly similar, you know, if you actually look at them. But if you just like put them both in a black dress and then just had them stood next to Bruce Willis, there's a brunette in a black dress. And they were just like, Bruce Willis has basically just traded Demi Moore for a younger model. It's like, no, he, he just likes brunettes, darling. <laughs> that's that's yeah. it. Just likes brunettes. Yeah. And when they broke up, was it not mutual <laughs> or something? Like, I don't know. Well, I thought she was, uh, she wanted to go off and bonk uh, Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher, yeah. So she traded him in for a younger model. Yeah. Uh, so oh, she, like, yeah. Yeah. And Ashton Kutcher's got hair, so she's like bald discrimination. So, yeah, well, who's the real I monster don't, I don't here? I don't like hearing that shit. Don't like hearing that shit. Yeah. I could have been Picard. If you had an eating disorder. Uh, <laughs> can you, can you apologize girl. enough? <laughs> into, into the uh, cake fridge. Into the yeah. Cake. I'm so sorry. I tried so hard. I ate all the trifles. I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. And I also had the both chocolate eclairs. And there is a chance also that I took the last bit of mint chocolate chip ice cream. Deploy the laxatives. <laughs> <laughs> and send Chief O'Brien up. He just killed 278 <laughs> 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 I think I should beam oh, him into space. Been, but if it, what if Picard had beamed down with O'Brien, and then uh, he said, uh, "Oh, it's not very Christmassy." And then Picard went, 
make it snow. Ah! Genius. Genius. And so it did. <laughs> and then it, well, that's, that's how it all led to this disaster. It is. They just did not consider the consequences. To so go for seconds. Uh, so now that you know, I, I guess with the SWAT team dead, the first plane has been crashed. Kick um, ass. What's him? Kick ass. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. Fuck that pun. Get out. Get him out. Get him out. <laughs> oh man. Uh, <laughs> This the chat is great here. It's like toilets engaged. <laughs> Are you going for a, a number two? No, a number one. <laughs> I'm going for a two number one. I mean a number one number two. <laughs> Sometimes I even get confused. Yeah, I'm just an old white man, and I'm really sorry for being old and white. <laughs> <laughs> now send Chief O'Brien up the fucking murdering piece of shit. And also <laughs> take trolley as well, please. I need to drop off a captain's log. <laughs> 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 oh dear god no no my thigh's already been cramped up all day it's hurting so much now <laughs> stretch stretch it out stretch it out oh, oh man uh, where did we get to? Honestly. <laughs> Call me what, film, what film were we even talking about? Yeah. yeah, we're talking about Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's what we're discussing. So Miles O'Brien just crashed a plane before beaming out. Uh, <laughs> got loads of civilians killed. <laughs> If that would mean if E.T. was in the same universe as Die Hard, then Star Trek and Star Wars are the same universe. Absolutely. Having the same actor on board definitely makes it the same universe. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. Because shit has gotten real now, the the government sends in like a big special forces military team to take control of the situation, mm. uh, and and that's when they um, they are there to kind of um, take over the airport, and they're going to like um, play along with um, with William Sadler until they can take him down. They just need to try and find him, and so they they find the the like bug that these guys had placed in the luggage area at the start, uh, which allowed them to listen in on all the chat going on in the control tower. Um, and they start searching for him. But Barnes, the engineer that's kind of become a helper for McLean, um, I think he's got an idea about where um, where Sadler and his men might be hiding. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to remember which order this goes in. Well, um, when they, it's weird because when they because it, the guys first arrive, there's just a lot of people saying fuck at each other for about 20 yeah. minutes, just shouting at each other. Um, we establish that uh, one of the like eight or nine of the, the crew uh, is a replacement, the guy who um was meant to come was ill, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's his like first kind of day with the the group. Uh, which plays in later on um, when we realize what's what's going on. I think this is when McLean's going back again, trying to. Uh, I think this is the part where the Kurt, the general just <laughs> strangles the guy in the plane for some reason. Somehow allows him to turn his back and then <coughs> just get dropped in there. Goes into the cockpit, kills the two pilots, 
window gets blown open and they've got to they've got to start working out how to um land the general uh oh yeah the, yeah like, <clears throat> no sorry i got the order of it mixed up yeah because i was thinking this is where they find where the church is but it's not um they they land the plane first yeah so the general yeah. kills the soldier who's who is like the worst in, you know guard in history goes up to the cockpit um kills both the pilots but in the crossfire he, he shoots out the window so his plane's kind of fucked and he needs to land quickly so they bring him down um on one of the runways and mclean goes after him because he knows if he can get a hold of this guy he will be able to um trade him for for holly's plane um and be able to get her rescued and so he's determined to take this guy hostage so he you know he did that thing where he, he's goes in the underground tunnels to get out to the correct runway um he has to climb up through like a sewer grate to get there and it's blocked and it's really heavy and he just about just about gets run over by the fucking plane um just another scene like that where he's trapped and he's he's you know he just makes it out in the nick of time um and he um the, <laughs> the plane lands the guy gets out and he has this like lovely moment where he's like ah freedom <laughs> and just mclean yeah. comes in and fucking wallops him right in the face is it not, not yet, yet, asshole? <laughs> uh, I was just right. I was I think the first time I ever saw this, I was just expecting him to get shot in the head by McLean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> freedom. <laughs> oh, this is just like, there you go. No, he's dead. Now you're going to have to let the leg. He's got nothing to fight for. Bye. Yeah. Uh, yeah and so this is, well, this is where McLean's like, because the, the the general says to him like who are you and he's like i'm one of the good guys because you're one yeah. of the bad guys because i need to tell the audience that because i just got 200 people killed yeah <laughs> you whoops meanwhile <laughs> brian's like <laughs> it's like man i'm lucky picard's in his shitter right now face with a fucking Desserts and pie, uh, and having a captain's log. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, torpedoes cool. away. <laughs> <laughs> that was from chat, by the way. I didn't make that one up. Torpedoes. <laughs> uh, but before uh, before McLean can take this guy prisoner, um, Sadler and the others rock up in their cars and start shooting at him. So he's he's forced to take shelter in the cockpit. <laughs> uh, and that's when you get the the epic grenade sequence. Uh, this is this is the, one of the stupidest scenes in cinema I've ever seen. Uh, and I love, I, you know, I love the Die Hard films. This was a time in life where Bruce Willis was actually likable. Um, and so, but this you can't deny this is just one of the daftest, silliest, stupidest scenes uh, that there's ever been in, in movie history. Yeah, Cause, so they um they they shoot in the cockpit, but they can't kill him. So they throw grenades in, and these things fucking sit there for about five minutes. Like McLean's looking at them, like oh oh shit oh no ah, oh. and and uh, you know they throw about twenty of them in. No, the, there's a bucket in there. I can't go in there. Should I try the toilet? No, Picard's having a shit. I can't go in there. Uh, where can I? So oh, oh, oh no, I'll sit in the in the pilot seat. No, it's not very comfortable. I'm going to sit in the other seat, then strap myself in, then push the eject. Yeah, Meanwhile, I'd love to know. I, I'd love to know how the ejector works on this plane, which clearly doesn't have ejector seats in real life. Like it's yeah. not a fighter jet with a canopy on top. It's it's like a, a transport plane, but it's got yeah. ejectors. And like generally speaking, I would say that the special effects are pretty good in this film, but you get that one shot where <laughs> the plane explodes like a fucking nuke going off and it's just Bruce Willis like hurtling towards the camera <laughs> and it's just, it's the <laughs> fakest fucking bit of green screen that you could wish for. It's it's really inappropriate for a film like this. Um, I know, the green screen was so bad it could have been the Star Wars prequels. Indeed. And you also, like, really, if he goes straight up and then the parachute opens, he should just float back down into the burning wreckage of the plane and get incinerated. But, like, somehow he lands half a mile away. Because they went, 
Oh look, he's he's very slowly parachuting <laughs> down. We do have ballistic weaponry, but we <laughs> point and go. If if only we if only we had oh, military wait. military trained sharpshooters here. Oh yeah, wait, we do vehicles that could get to him really quickly. Yeah. No, he he got away being that twenty yards away from us. Gore. That McLean. It's uh, it's great as well because fucking everyone's yelling at McLean after this. Like Lorenzo's swearing like a crazy bastard, and the the captain guy of the military's yelling at him and calling him an asshole and stuff. Like fucking everybody in this movie hates John McLean. Yeah, yeah. He's just taking, they're trying to plan shit, and he's just taking matters in his own hands and just fucking shit up, getting passengers killed. Blowing other planes up, <clears throat> trying yeah. to do his own rescues, putting other planes in jeopardy. Because Sadler could have got, just gone straight back and gone, right, land them all. <laughs> just land them all. It just yeah. caused a huge covering pile up there. Uh, so, yeah, they got he got, he got got bloody lucky that uh, time was a ticking, did that McLean. Uh, but then we get the, uh, the, uh, the church bit. Oh, the runways used to be in a different area and longer, and it used to go through this neighborhood. And uh, yeah. so there's a little portion of a neighborhood that uh, these lines could be running through. That's because, because <laughs> yeah, there are some silly elements of this film because the, it was the fucking guy from the airport that had to say to McLean, never mind the group of trained army people, um, look, these guys keep appearing at the fucking airport. They're very close by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I, I never, I never thought of that. I never thought they keep coming and going. And I thought, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe they're actually fucking nearby. Yeah, it's funny how they always appear within a matter of minutes when they need to. Yeah, it's like they're close by. It's. Thanks for telling us that. Do, do you know where they could be? Well. This is this is where the airport runway used to go. They used to clip this uh, little bit of the neighborhood, but uh, then we changed it and went it this way. So they go, they go, uh, dead old oh, dead old man in a church hunting. <laughs> yeah. Um, what also happens is the they they figure out a way to talk to all the planes up in the air, where it's like they can use the the sort of outer marker beacon of the airport um to to switch over to a different frequency or something and they can talk to the planes and warn them so they're able to do that but as that's going on um dick up in in the the plane with uh, with holly he's able to tap into that and he hears the warning that's going on so he realizes that there's a big terrorist um event going on at this airport and uh, that's when he's able to like go on to the the news um, and and do like a live interview, and that causes like a mass panic in the airport. So the, the, it's kind of good, like all these different events kind of interlink, and they all have consequences. But mm. for the time being, like <clears throat> McLean and Barnes, just for whatever reason, go on their own to this this neighborhood. Uh, they go they go through houses for some reason first, and then like the last place they check is like the abandoned church right yeah, at the edge. It's like, <laughs> don't you think that's the most likely place this shit's going to be going down? Hi, three-year-old child. Is your pa- oh, I see your parents are watching the TV. Have you seen any armed terrorists? <laughs> any terrorists in the neighborhood? <laughs> well, they could be at the abandoned church over there. Okay, we'll try your neighbors. Don't worry. We'll try your neighbors. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like being at Scooby-Doo and saying, we've been around the neighborhood and we can't find anything. Is there anywhere else they could be? Well, there is this spooky mansion over here in... Maybe you should have tried the abandoned church first. Do you think that might have been a good place for terrorists to set up base instead of in some suburban house's front room? There, there's a great bit, though. I fucking laugh my ass off at this when um, John's like trying to sneak into the church to find out what's going on there, and his beeper goes off because Holly tries to call him. Oh, and yeah, it's, yeah. oh fuck! And it, it alerts one of the sentries there, who ends up getting into a fight with him. You know, instead of shooting him, he just like tries to tackle him, and they fight. And then John stabs him in the eye with a fucking icicle. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and he, he's the camera's right in on him with a fucking ice ice pick like sticking out of his eye, going ah. <laughs> Like, yeah, don't worry, he got the point. Indeed, yeah. Everybody, chill. <laughs> yeah, let's just be cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> People oh. in chat are just like, the icicle was the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, it was, it was gone, gone, gone. Interesting facts coming our way from Lady Gravemaster saying ground ejections. Oh do send you away from the wreckage because the design of the seat and the cartridge activated device have taken this into consideration the same way a canopy is meant to eject backwards so apparently it's not that unreasonable that john would have been ejected away from the wreckage so well but they can still see him clearly and they had guns <laughs> yeah there's that and he's floating yeah. down really slowly yeah. and this isn't uh, like warzone where you can we know, yeah. <laughs> you can't just cut your shoot and then open another one when you're close to the ground. Yeah, but I just get beamed by people. I'm right? just go fucking kilos. The uh, yeah, the chat's amazing with this one. Ice that guy. <laughs> really <laughs> stuck it to him. Stuck it. <laughs> <laughs> the the eyes have it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Guess Ice he didn't see, see that. I yeah. see you. <laughs> oh <sighs> man. Um so yeah, John kills that sentry guy with fucking icicle. Uh and then the, the army guys rock up and weirdly they seem to change out the ammunition on their guns just before they go into battle. Like they switch out their magazines from red ones to blue ones. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever could that mean, I wonder. Hmm. That's a beard stroking moment. What could it mean? Hmm. See, as if you hadn't shaved your beard off, you could be doing that right now. I know, I'm getting prickly again, though. Getting prickly. Yeah, yeah did you miss it? Yeah. Highs my double chin. <clears throat> I, I, I kind of think sometimes I want to like shave mine off so I can actually see my fucking face again. <laughs> it's, been, it's been too long. I've kind of forgotten what I look like. <laughs> I think I think I always I think about once I think I've done it twice this year because well it would have been once but uh, obviously the uh, the beard shaving a couple of weeks back was an impromptu moment on Friday night tights but uh, once a year I do like to just get rid of it all yeah get get rid of it all once a year and and just realize that there is a face there and and as soon as you do it you realize fuck it, my cheeks are cold now <laughs> yeah you really feel the cold on it it's crazy. Hmm. Sometimes as well, like I do it, and then I'm like, "Oh yeah, there's a reason I grew a beard. It's to hide the horrors beneath." Chat was this, <clears throat> a couple of people in chat were asking as well. Actually, when's Gary coming? Uh, I believe his stream is going till about eleven. Um, I'm never good with the time zones, but I think it's on till about eleven our time. So uh, he'll probably join us. Before too long, <laughs> like <not> ten minutes <laughs> arriving for the super chats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where did we get to? Yeah. So the army guys go in, um, mm. but they 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 seem to be um, shooting pretty ineffectually at the the guys in the church and vice versa. Whatever could be happening here, it's almost like they're mm. they're shooting blanks at each other. Um, and John spots the rest of them escaping on on snowmobiles, so he he gets out there and goes after them. And somehow they teleport into the middle of the Alaskan wilderness because, yeah. like, they're just they've gone from like DC to like the middle of fucking nowhere instantly. <laughs> it's great. Well, they're meant to be in suburbia, but no, okay. Yeah, because you can see it. There's trees and mountains and stuff yeah. in the background and snow everywhere. Yeah. So fuck knows where they are, but um, yeah, they're there. And um, John. For whatever reason, like when he's he's firing at one of the guys who comes after him, his his bullets aren't hitting him, and so obviously it clues you in. Like, well, something's wrong. Something's wrong with his gun. But he um, uses his pistol to kill one of the guys, uh, and yeah. then he takes their gun and gets on their snow speeder. So he then starts using that gun. But of course, what what we don't well what we don't know at that time. Is the blue the blue magazines are the blanks and the red magazines are the live? 
Yeah. Uh, he's like, I'm sure, I'm sure I hit him. I'm sure I hit him. And then he looks into the magazine and realizes that uh, these are blanksies. Yeah. And he proves it pretty effectively. Uh, when, he, when he fucking like strides back into the airport, yells at Lorenzo, who calls him a motherfucker, and he's about to arrest him because, like, again, Lorenzo just loves swearing at him. Uh, and then he just <laughs> throws him back against the window, gets the gun out, and just fucking lays into him with it. Uh, and like you say, there's cops everywhere, all with guns pointed at him. None of them think to fire. Because as far as they yeah. know, this guy is hosing down their captain, like, right in front of their eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe they really yeah, hate yeah. him that much like well yeah Lorenzo is a dick like if you want to gun him down he wants to give himself up <laughs> first yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> but it proves this give me fucking parking tickets and fucking yeah <laughs> And it proves his point. Like the it was blanks, and so he's able to convince Lorenzo. Like, yeah, the whole thing is fake. These these army guys are not on our side. They're working with Colonel Stewart. Plot Wouldn't twist. you know it? Yeah, plot twist. Yeah, um, and uh, while they're getting away, uh, it goes back to the guys in the in the um uh, those those guys who are, who are getting away and joining Sadler, and and they're all kind of congratulating each other on a job well done and then the kid who just joined the group the day before you know that day because the other one was ill they just said hey kid we really wish that you were with us in this certain time and he's like do you grenade up because yeah. no, no yeah. you were we wouldn't have to do this and they just fucking kill him yeah like, oh, you get the proper because sh- you get the proper shot of him like with his neck open there's blood spraying everywhere and he's like oh, yeah, <laughs> just there's loads of these horrendous deaths that linger. It's just like, oh come, on. oh, put him out of his misery. Oh, could he just stabbed yeah. him in his heart? It would have been quicker. Oh, yeah. or shot him in the head. You know, yeah, poor just, Telford, poor Telford. Shooting blanks. So. Shit, fuck, wrong magazine. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna shoot. Poor guy. So. They they are planning to escape on like a big cargo plane with uh, with all the soldiers and evil dictator man, and um, McLean is trying to get to them to stop them before they take off, and so he can't get there on on you know on the ground because there's mass panic and people everywhere and like they they try to get there in a cop car and it immediately crashes and lorenzo's fucking useless so he gets coleman the news reporter and like she's just got a convenient chopper on standby that he can grab <laughs> and off they go <laughs> and then she's like, if you give me the story i'll have your babies there's not the ride that i'm looking for yeah Fucking Bruce Willis just being a cool son of a bitch, as always. Yeah. Pussy just throwing themselves at him. Throwing themselves at him. Droning in Poontang in this film. <laughs> he just doesn't do any of it. Literally beating them off with a stick. <laughs> Woman! Woman! I don't actually understand why she's even there in the, the chopper with him, because he would have to know that's really fucking dangerous. Like, the guys oh, in that plane could easily shoot him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no fucks given from John McClane in this one. He just wants to save his wife. That's yeah. all he gives a yeah. shit about. He don't give a fuck about who, if it, who else is collateral damage. If it costs hundreds of civilian lives to save her, fuck it. So be it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool scene, though, because they fly out over the wing of this 747. He drops hmm. down onto it. He jams his coat into the ailerons so it can't... Yeah. They can't take off, and so, um, you know, the the captain guy of the army and um, whatever his name is, um, Colonel Stewart, they both have to go out and try and take McLean out. Um, why, why do they all just get out? <laughs> like, you know, everyone else is still just sat in their seat, and they just send one at a time onto the wing. Now, yeah, the, the thing is, when the the first guy opens up the door... It's opening up the door onto the wing. So when he goes and opens it, he can see that McLean isn't on the fucking wing by then. So why is he like looking like that and then steps out and McLean jumps at him from the top? It's just like, dude, you 
you deserve to get put through the fucking propeller. All right? Not propeller. Yeah. What a death as well. He gets sucked into the fucking <laughs> engine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then uh, Colonel Stewart comes out. He tries to do his Tai Chi on him. Um, I, I honestly thought he was going to strip butt fucking naked and, and have a go. I don't want a Tai Chi. You keep the dick away from me, dude. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, you're making me feel awkward. No. It touched my hip. It touched my hip. <laughs> it's like McLean will just jump into the engine himself. It's like, no, you're giving me yeah. the game. Yeah. <laughs> You too would do your naked Tai Chi with me. <laughs> no! Oh, oh man. It's, it's dribbled on me. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they fight, and he, yeah. he, he, he kind of kicks McLean's ass, but like McLean's able to open like a fuel valve on the engine. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that's the thing you can do, I guess. Uh, and so... The, the plane is able to take off now because the guy's been able to pull the fucking coat out of the wing. And um, McLean just, like, he's lying there on the ground and you think, oh, shit, he's lost. Man, what's he going to do? And he's just like, you okay, <laughs> motherfucker. And he lights the fuel on fire. And this shit is, like, so flammable that it goes like, like a fucking missile 100 miles an hour across the ground, straight up through the air and into the plane. And boom. It goes off like with the force of a fucking atomic bomb. Like the goes, entire screen is just flames. It explodes like an airplane out of fuel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just there, lad. It's the, don't, don't worry about debris, you know, because it's not as if a massive explosion like that would have a huge surface area for the debris. He's just sat there going, <laughs> you be gay, hey, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Chat's also mentioning how long this runway must have been because they are fucking around on this plane for hours, like yeah. fighting and shouting at each other and like kicking each other and stuff. All the while, it's just cruising along. Like It's like the runway in uh, Fast and the Furious 6. You know, when it just it keeps going and going and going. I pride myself on never having seen any of the Fast and Furious films. Uh -huh. Pride myself on that. I think you're a man of distinction in that case. Yeah, <laughs> that, that Your soul is cleaner. Your brain cells. Yeah, oh, absolutely. They are the dumbest fucking movies since Armageddon. <laughs> Do it close my eyes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I miss you, baby. No, what a mistake. Fucking I Ben heard. Affleck literally chewing up the asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> they were all chewing up the asteroid. Holy uh, shit. Steve Woo! Nom, nom, when he's, nom, when, nom. When he's riding the, the nuclear bomb, he's just sitting on it like, woohoo! <laughs> just wanted to feel the power between my legs, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh god I ain't gonna make it back without him. <laughs> get that spark going Bruce daddy, daddy's not gonna make it back <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to review that movie one day it's fucking incredible <laughs> Oh, oh dear God! That film is something else. It is something else. Oh man, the expanse. <sighs> the expanse has got nothing on Armageddon. <laughs> for scientific accuracy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> We're gonna land on an asteroid. Then we're gonna nuke the motherfucker. Bruce Willis is gonna bring a bunch of rapists with him. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a couple of pedos in there as well. Fucking asteroid designed by H.R. Geiger. <laughs> Just like... goddamn it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could be oh. in prison. Thinking about those kids I fucked, but no, I'm on this asteroid blowing shit up to save the world. 
<laughs> so my wife and their kitty can get a million dollars. And you're just like, watch me, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I should feel here. What? <laughs> they say, when I go home, I'm going to get my 78 rape convictions taken away. <laughs> This is Armageddon. He's <laughs> <laughs> pissed at Ben for fucking his door. That's the least of his problems. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Oh, man. I might be confusing some of it with Con Air at the same time. <laughs> some of that was Con Air for sure, yeah. Like uh, Garland of- Green. But that was that was extremely like mixed messages you were getting from the end of that movie. When you when you get like the montage of all the characters laughing and smiling at the end, like with the credits, it's like, why are you showing them like this? They're all murderers and rapists. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Five counts of rape. Yeah. <laughs> Finger guns. Oh my god. You would you would absolutely not get away with that now. No. No, you can't get away with being fucking heterosexual now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, e, blimey, icky thumb. So then, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's effectively the the movie done. Like the the plane explodes like a nuke, um, and because everything's on fire now, like that's apparently all it needs for for the other planes to come in and land, because you know they're not going to land on the wreckage and like fuck themselves no. up or anything. It's all fine. <laughs> it's that's fine, no problem. Oh, <sighs> um, get out of your system. That's better. Um, so yeah, Hall, John gets his lovely reunion with Holly, and his parking ticket gets ripped up. So, damn, he keep, he just keeps saying, I love you so much, and then it cuts away <laughs> to someone else, and then it cuts back, I love you so much. Okay, cuts away, <laughs> else comes back, I love you so much. Okay, John, we get it, you love your wife, we get it. Okay, it's the only line that you said, and then the report yeah. is just like, Stop recording them. Let him finger her without the cameras being on. Well, he's probably saying to Holly, like, do you know how much Poontang I turned down so that I could be with you right now? Yeah, yeah. I, I was beating them off. That bitch over there with the helicopter, she wanted me to fucking impregnate her, for God's sake. <laughs> At least the fact still just wanted to fuck. That's all she wanted. Quickie. Yeah. You know, around the I reckon one of the yeah. guys in the army probably would have. Let's just be honest. Without doubt, like William Sadler would have got butt naked with me in his hotel room. We could have done Tai Chi together, had a good sweaty <laughs> workout, and then <laughs> when he came out onto the wing, he was just dressed. His, his fly was down, and his willy was just out. <laughs> <laughs> Running around with it flapping in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Just jam that into the ale you're on, you know. Ah, oh, we cannot take off. I'm coming for you with my Tai Chi, Dilly. <laughs> every every angle that it turned, there was a pot plant on the fucking plane wing. They just like. <laughs> 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 Why are these pot plants on the, the the plane wing? Don't question it. Don't question it. <laughs> they cover the bar uh, the world must not see so that that was the experience that was Die Hard 2 man it was fucking like, great <laughs> it just yeah for all for all the the dumb moments like the grenades and and all that stuff like it's uh, it was just a fun fucking movie and it's It's exactly like other films that we've covered, like when we talked about Commando and stuff. Like, you just can't help but have a laugh when you watch it. You know, it's just Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are meant to be fun, though. These these films aren't meant to be taken massively seriously. 
You, you meant to you meant to cheer when shit blows up, you know? You meant to be like, ah, oh, when old people get riddled with bullets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or cheer when that happens, you know. Yeah, or cheer, whichever one floats your boat, you know, if you're one of Bruce Willis's Armageddon crew. Um, but yeah, they're just meant they're meant to be escapist romps. That's that's what they're there for. This isn't Oscar bait. It's never meant to be Oscar bait. It's just, it's like, come on, come to the cinema, forget the cares of the world for a couple of hours, and just let us take you to this crazy adventure, because this guy's having another one of those days. And it's, I think films like this are, are beautiful, and I miss films like this so much. Yeah. Because they're just so much fun, and we don't have an equivalent of this anymore. I miss we don't people. Have these macho fucking movies. A hundred percent. Yeah, I miss people who who kind of like you know actors and and guys in action movies who carry themselves with real confidence, who've actually got real mm. charisma, who like fucking smoke like chimneys and swear at each other constantly. You know, it's Drink. just yeah, it's just fun. It's like it's what you kind of want from movies like that. It shouldn't yeah. be all. Men like want to be sanitized and women want to be have them in them. Yeah. Well, all the women in this movie do. They're they're yeah. after John McClane, man. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Bruce Willis, like it's nice to be reminded of a time when he actually cared about being in movies and kind yeah. of looked like he was enjoying himself. Because that time has long since passed. Yeah. Uh probably twenty five years or so. Yeah. He hit about 40, and then that's it. He kind of gave up giving a, a shit. I think his last, I don't know, could be doing a wrong here, but I can't remember anything decent after uh, Die Hard 3. I mean, nah. Die Hard 4 was pretty dull. I can barely remember anything from it, and Die Hard um, mm. 5 was just an absolute disaster of a film. Like, awful. Just cartoon I nonsense. I, I, wanted, I don't think I've seen that. After yeah. 4, I was just like, after, uh, the whole plane business, it's just like... And the Kevin Smith. Yeah. And the daughter and the, the guy, and the, it's just like, no, I don't want... Daddy, Daddy John McClane. I want fax woman who wants to suck his dick behind the fucking counter while people are asking her for directions to Texas. That's that's the kind of what platform eight Texas. That's, yeah. that's the kind of McClane that you want. You know, you want those. You want it's like. Indiana Jones, I don't want another Indiana Jones. You know, no, I want absolutely Indiana not. Indiana Jones that, that globe trots and has incredible adventures. And, you know, I don't want geriatric Indiana Jones that's being carried by his grandson, probably now. Um, or God knows what in the next one. No, no, no. no. These, these, these films are. You, you got to have a certain age cut off it's kind of like 40 45 and that, yeah probably sort of 45 like, i yeah. think after that you kind of lose that energy and that kind of um that kind of charisma that you have at that age um and you can you know it, it becomes harder to do these these action scenes and to to look engaged with it beyond that point then you just start to look kind of uncomfortable and and like you don't really want to be there and yeah. bruce willis absolutely had that he um People are mentioning Sin City in chat. Like he was definitely good oh, in that, yeah. but it it, yeah. it was it wasn't the kind of fun movie that this is. Like that's obviously a bit mm. more um, a somber kind of character, but he was great in it, and he actually seemed yeah, to like he, be invested in it. But he was oh. he was able to be his his miserable self. I think Twelve Monkeys was before Die Hard Three. Uh, mm. Maybe sure. I think it was it was around about the same time. It was maybe slightly after. My Hard 3 is... What's that going to be? 93? Uh, Die Hard 3 is... 95. Yeah. 12 <clears throat> Monkeys. You could say that was more of a Brad Pitt vessel as well. I don't know. He was uh, the Brad more Pitt, fair 
chewed up the scenery in that one. Yeah, Bruce Willis was very like same year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Die Hard Three was okay. Like, I, I didn't love it. Um, oh, I, I, did. I, 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 Samuel L. Jackson was great in it. Um, didn't like Jeremy Irons that much. I thought he was kind of a weak villain. Uh, but maybe that's just me. Um, but... I like Jeremy. I, I did like Jeremy Irons because, <clears throat> well, you know, Jeremy Irons is a is a classic British actor again. I think it was very much more of the mold. Uh, of the Hans Gruber esque character than, um, but just more droll uh, and less charismatic. Uh, Alan Rickman, I mean, you can't. Hans Gruber was like the dog's bollocks. He was just fucking. Sp- he was great villain. Um, he, he Hans Gruber could have been a Bond villain for fuck's sake. He's that good. Mm. Uh, his charisma and his, you know, the way that Alan Rickman. I mean, Alan Rickman was just. He was. Sensational, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. He's just fucking great in that as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm Doing gonna that. cut your heart out with a spoon. Yeah, and the, the, a lot of these lines were bloody improvised as well. Uh, yeah. When he's grabbing to go, you eight o'clock, and he storms off, and then he comes back and goes, "Bring your friend," and then goes, <laughs> "That was all. That was all improvised." Um, that wasn't that wasn't in the script, you know. He was just improvising like crazy on, and they were just like, "This is great, just fucking keep this shit in." Um, mm. This is great stuff from Rickman. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the fact that Jeremy Irons. We're going da- back to you know, we had a Hans Gruber link. Um, Samuel L. Jackson was great in it. Holy shit, that scene where he's got the plaque around him. You would never do that nowadays. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'd forgotten yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. You you never have those nowadays. Well, um, I mean, this was kind of in the wake of the race riots in LA, wasn't it? Um, yeah, this is Rodney King quite soon yeah. after Rodney King. I think it's that 94 Rodney King. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, right in the aftermath of that. So, yeah, I suppose it was kind of a racially charged like atmosphere. But, yeah, you wouldn't get away with that kind of thing now. Yeah, I'm just trying to find where... What year that was? The Rodney King beating was. That's why you're looking uh, up that. Um, one person in chat was asking me about my thoughts on Hudson Hawk because um, they enjoyed it. Like that that movie apparently was an absolute disaster of a shoot. Like I, yeah. I tempted to do a, a production hell video on that one because the it was the most haphazard like cobbled together production ever. Nobody had a clue what was going on. The script changed from hour to hour. Nobody could decide what kind of movie they actually wanted it to be. It was just a total Bruce Willis vanity project, but he didn't actually know how to run or produce a movie. So, man, yeah, it would be an interesting one to talk about. I never liked I never liked Hudson Hawk. I never liked it. Definitely it, it, again, okay. <clears throat> that was all it, right. It, it varies wildly in, in tone and, and like intent. You know, you've got ridiculous slapstick humor in it, but you've got moments where there's like real violence and action. You know, it's trying to be a heist movie. It's trying to be a comedy movie. It's it's yeah. trying to be a bit of everything. And like, yeah, it just it shows exactly that they didn't have a clue what they were trying to do with it. Yeah, it was it was a it was a hodgepodge mess. I because uh, I used to watch Moonlighting when I was a kid. <clears throat> I used to love Moonlighting, so I was, I was kind of hoping that Hudson Hawk was going to be kind of like a Moonlighting esque. Uh, level of level of humor, you know, but you know, slightly within reality as well. But no, it's just it's all over. The, it was all over the place. Mm. Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I did like Bruce Willis in Fifth Element. I really like that film, and yes. I, I'd like to review it uh, again. He seemed like he was no, no, ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. I mean, sorry, ninety-seven. Yeah, yeah, ninety-seven. <laughs> so. You know, you're getting to the late nineties there. He kind of looked like he was enjoying himself. He, he he was playing the character with that same kind of charisma that he had in Die Hard. Uh and it was just a really like quirky, fun, interesting sci-fi movie. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah I liked I really did uh like Fifth Element, actually. It is a great, completely different film. I like the way that they brought fashion, you know, fashion designers in to do the to really go fun point with the costumes and stuff it was yeah it was just a great yeah fifth element i think is a really fun movie if you can cut tucker out of it fucking chris tucker oh he is just 
death in that movie. Every scene he's yeah. in, you have to grind your fucking teeth. Yeah, he's the only he's the only poor part. Yeah, he's the only poor part of that. Otherwise, it's uh, it's a it's a great little film, great little film. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've uh, we do have a lot of super chats to look at. Um, okay. Do you have do you have time for that kind of thing, man? Or yeah, I can I can stick around for a bit. Oh fuck me as well! Like we just said, we'd get to the super chats and then Gary would rock up, and here he fucking is. Hold <laughs> well, on, I'm just gonna bring him in. <laughs> I'll help answer some super chats, sure. <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's up, man? <laughs> Nothing, you know. Just kind of rolling in whenever I want. Uh, yeah. On yeah. channel. Yeah. Thanks for inviting Gary, me. On. Oh, Gary is never late. He arrives exactly when he means to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh fuck! I need yeah. to move from my my fucking webcam here because I'm getting I'm getting shuffled to the the left as more people come in. There we go. I'm centered. Like uh, like the opening credits from Dallas now. <laughs> <laughs> How do you even know about that show? <laughs> I used to watch that shit when I was a kid. You know. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. I loved it. That was uh, yeah, it was. Dallas, Dallas was big in the UK, wasn't it? Like it was quite yeah, popular over here. Dynasty or Dynasty, whichever one you prefer, and uh, and yeah. Dallas, yeah, they were, they were huge over here at the time. Duplicitous dumb Americans, yeah, I can see how that would sell over there. Yeah. Rich, rich yeah, dumb perfect. Americans, yeah, yeah. duplicitous yeah. rich dumb Americans, yeah. We love. I mean, it. you know, you have got no idea how mundane life was in the UK, like in the 1980s. <laughs> so <laughs> seeing these glamorous fucking Americans, like in their awesome houses and stuff, like yeah, that's exactly what people wanted, like total escapism. I had a two foot pond in my front root in my front garden. I thought that was the best thing in the world. Ever. <laughs> you were the dog's bollocks, man. <laughs> Talk of the town. <laughs> that's how boring the 80s were for, for us. <laughs> That we used to huddle around the corner and watch Joan Collins with a, I can't because I'm sandwich with a massive shoulder pads and Linda Gray and a massive shoulder pads and everyone just driving around in ostentatious cars and lifestyles and we loved it. Oh, it's like that for everybody in the 80s. Come on, are you kidding me? I'm so rich and powerful and have everything I need. Mm -hmm. I have so many problems in life. <laughs> <laughs> Every time the camera was on Joan Collins, it's like somebody smeared a bunch of Vaseline on the lens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Shepard in, in uh, Moonlighting as well. Yeah, you know, Bruce Willis like in focus, and it got to Sybil Shepard, and somebody just come to the camera and gone. Oh. <laughs> 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 a of, breathe a lot of condensation over, so you you see this just furry fucking mess. Oh, it's good. She looks so good. She looked, yeah, you can't fucking see her. That's why. Yep. Yeah. They, they, they actually, did they do that in, in the Star Trek episode she was in too? Uh, with Joan Collins, of, yes. Yeah, with Edith Keeler. It felt like they did the blurry thing too. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. With all ladies. Right. <laughs> Where if, uh, if she didn't die, Hitler would win the war. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, so I mean, what are you doing? They, they should have waited no, for no, Michael no. Burnham. Yeah, exactly. Oh, she can fix everything. I've heard horror stories about this week's episode. Yeah, I'm about to watch it after this. So ah. I'm going to wait till tomorrow. I, I gotta, I gotta get the Mandalorian first to at least perk me up. I think before, right <laughs> before Dude, I this movie it. perks me up. Die Hard Two. I freaking love Die Hard Two. Right. I like it just as much as the first man. Uh, right. and it, there, when I was younger and not very smart. Not that I'm much smarter now. I thought it was better than the first one. I walked out of the theater. I'm like, that was better. It not, it's yeah. not, but it's, it's <laughs> it, still it's, good. It's, it's still really good. It's bigger and it's got more actiony stuff. Yeah, um, I mean, we we we've obviously talked about it in quite a lot of detail. Um, and you know, the general consensus I think we've got is that like it's just a great fun action movie that you just don't get anymore. Like. We love that people are swearing at each other constantly. Everyone's fucking yelling at each other all the time. Everyone's smoking. You know, like there's loads of violence. There's lots of gore and uh, like splatter effects when people get shot. It's just great. It's everything you want from like a a late 80s, early 90s action movie. You know, there's there's some really dumb bits in it 
for sure. Um, there's grenades with really like questionable timers on them, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Do you John really McClane, think, I, mean, I could be wrong, but could could a could a Zippo like catch the 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 fuel on fire and would the fuel follow it all the way up through the snow up no. into the plane <laughs> at the end? No. <laughs> No, in reality, <laughs> no. But in the film, sure, we're fine could, with it. We're fine could, with it. Could, could outrun a plane that's probably going two hundred miles an hour? <laughs> I, I don't think so. But it looks cool as fuck. It does. It does, and it's, I didn't realize it was about, based on a book. What if? Uh, what if Colmini was actually Miles O'Brien? And uh, he teleported out before the, and we had this whole thing we went into, Gary. You would have, you would have loved him. Right? Oh, he teleported over to Con Air. That's what he did. Well, well Miles O'Brien decided to go back. Yeah. Miles O'Brien, yeah, yeah. He went back yeah. in time because he wanted to fly a real plane because he was he likes his ships and planes. So he's flying his real plane uh, back in time, and then fucking terrorist attack happens, and then his plane gets like chucked down, realizes he's going to crash, teleports out. But she is waiting for him. How how do you enjoy your trip back in time? <laughs> Don't mate. No, no, no. Stop. Well, he's Just also go. in Con Air, remember, with John Cusack. John Cusack steals his car. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. car as well. And then it gets fucking yep. dropped right in front of him. Yep. Yeah. That's a movie we need to talk about. I think. Oh, we yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll do it on air. Yeah. As as and I were discussing the really questionable moral messaging in that movie with with yeah. Garland Green, it's like m murdering <laughs> children, and then like he's just portrayed as this happy go lucky chap. By the end. Yeah, he just likes to murder children. Outside of that, he's just, just likes he's a, to murder kids. Sweetest guy. It's it's yeah. he, he has a character arc because he let one of them go, and so that makes him a good person. <laughs> he's redeemed. Yeah, the three that's in his hotel suite that had been drip dried, you know, of all blood in the. Oh uh, god! <laughs> they're not doing so well. No. It's when you see. Days. He, he's days. gonna he's gonna start a new life as a professional gambler in Vegas. <laughs> you know, so everything will be fine. It'll be, it'll be yeah. fine. What could yeah. go wrong? God damn! Uh, yeah, that's that's a movie and a half. That fire truck chase totally integrated into the rest of the movie, um, and I, I just love how people can teleport from place to place in that. You know, like uh, Cyrus gets thrown off the top of the the truck, and then he just lands in a power plant somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> gets electrocuted. <laughs> it's amazing. Which is right next to the strip somewhere. It's like I don't recall seeing that there. I've been there a lot. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't remember that there. Um, but yeah, the wrong great, wrong great wrong fun. In DC at all? No, okay. Yeah, but yeah, like, like Die Hard Two was a, it was a fun yeah. movie, and like I, it'd been a good few years since I'd seen it all the way through. So watching it today, uh, damn, it's a pretty good way to kill a couple of hours. It really you know? is. But it is, it is great because it's Die Hard Two, Die Harder. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can't get any better a title than that. You can die hardest. You really can't. And it was, die harder. <laughs> it, yeah, and it was taken seriously back then. We're like, yeah, die harder. Yeah, you, know, yeah. and, you know, when we have we have stuff like, let's go kick some ass. You know, that's yeah. that was the eighties, man. That was yeah. the eighties. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, we're we were talking as well about when McLean wants to prove that uh, the special forces soldiers have betrayed them. Um, and that their weapons were loaded with blanks, so he just strides right into Lorenzo's office and just opens up on him, like with this machine gun. And there's he's surrounded by cops who are all armed, and none of them try to stop him. Nope. <laughs> well, obviously he's making a point, you know. So yeah. Well, yeah. they just they hated Lorenzo that much; they just didn't give a shit. Hill Street Blues, yeah. Yeah. But he's got an arc too. Remember when people had character arcs, even like sub characters? That uh, uh, those are the days. Well, my my take yep. on Die Hard Two is that this this film is about the lengths that a man will go through to not pay his parking ticket. <laughs> that's because that's his character arc. Gets his parking ticket at the start. <laughs> goes. They won't let him. They won't let him off it. 
kills everyone, including a plane, a plane full of people. And then at the end of the night, we're going to tear it up. That's his arc. His arc's to have his parking ticket removed. It, it's also a cautionary tale, right, about the dangers of technology because John's got his beeper, which initially seems great because his wife can contact him, but then it almost gets him killed when he's yeah. trying to sneak into the church. So, man, like you have to be careful with that technology. Back then, beepers were all the rage. <laughs> they were. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, like I wouldn't have gotten any of my dope if it wasn't for beepers. So. <laughs> See, everybody called their dealer with 911 because that was the emergency, which was, I need to get high. It's the emergency. Uh, <laughs> ah, okay. We were just talking about like how, how like just phoning someone was a big investment of your time. Because like if you wanted to phone their beeper, then they had to get to a payphone and then they had to like work out who called them and then they had to phone that person back. Like, man, like it was a serious business just making a phone call back then. You know, you you had to really put the work in. It Not was. Nice. I, I used to go entire days without looking at a phone, picking up a phone, going through my life without having to call anybody. We would just, yeah, we just figured it out somehow. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was boring, though. Yeah. Ladies, bar- like, I would never give up the internet. It was, it was much garbage as it's brought us. I love the internet. So, I bet yeah. well, no I mean, this. That- this whole YouTube thing has worked out quite well for us, I guess. So we should we yeah. should probably do that. Yeah. It's been okay. It, it, it has been okay. Thanks, Mama Susan. Yeah. We love you. <laughs> we love you, Mama Susan. Please don't shadow burn us. Yeah. Please don't pa- say gay and stuff like no. Page me, page me, Susan. Page me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I, th- I just got out of the doghouse, uh, and I think as well, you got sick, so that wasn't your fault. But I'm out. Um, but it's the algorithms kick back in, baby. <clears throat> I like yeah. December December's been great. Yeah, uh, November like October, November were kind of uh, leaner times. Yeah, but yeah, yeah they, this they, this. They, this- the algorithm- politics and not the entertainment channel yeah they're usually not like october november are usually fantastic yeah. uh and it was yeah it was the politics and uh th- they youtube was making a lot of last minute changes behind the scenes which they still are by the way they just implemented another thing that's pissed we won't talk about it here that's pissed a lot of people off so uh we're, we're fighting against that too uh and uh, people are understandably going to other places now can't blame them when uh, they, they can't and talk. Simp, incel, and virgin. R- right. Um, th- you know, th- that obviously solves the woes of the world, doesn't oh, it? And whore. <laughs> and and oh, whore. No, 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 no. You, no. I draw the line there. It's one of my favorite words. <laughs> yeah. I love calling a bitch a whore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like the fax lady. <laughs> just the facts ma'am just the facts yeah, yeah. say i get up here in about an hour you want to go yeah I was Air, airport, airport whore I, number three right <laughs> yeah, i was just gonna say i was wondering why friday night tights female audience is like just just under seven <laughs> percent yeah there we go That's brilliant that's for, for moving up it was four <laughs> Used to be four percent, now seven and a half percent. These women are just like we like some men that like top thirty to us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, Gary, you've just come in at the point where we were starting the super chats. So is that is that Let's cool with you, man? Absolutely. Yeah, all right. I, so half of them are probably like, "Where's Gary?" Anyway, so it's cool. <laughs> no, they know. <laughs> Critical drink is really cute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my guys, so yeah, you're gonna have like drinker simps now. That's gonna be a whole new thing for your channel. Uh, I'm well, thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about marketing in my bath water. So, like, you know, if there's any takers, yeah, yeah. on you, we've got other people simping on you. Like, she yeah. says, as is the kind of guy I'd like to marry, but you're the kind of guy she'd like to have a few drinks with and get a hotel room with and have a little man. Does she? Does she work at an airport? Mm. So I want to know. 
Do you have a fax machine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I look for in my Thank women. You. Fax machine. Do you have a fax Page. machine in a picture? If you do, we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> page me, page me. <laughs> we, can, we can work something out. <laughs> uh, what have we got here? The S foil here says, Drinker, please do a review of The Hunt from 2020. If you're a fan of Die Hard 1 and 2, you'll probably enjoy it. Betty Gilpin is my favorite femme action star. Yeah, so that's one. Is that not where they're hunting like um, Republicans or something? Like it's. Uh, oh my God. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind it's, of like. It's Damon Lindelof. He wrote it, so mm, but maybe it's good. Yeah. yeah but that's the Don't one where, that was controversial because uh, they it was supposed to be they're hunting Republicans, but it makes kind of uh, the the left look bad. They were trying to like flip the script on that one, and maybe it worked. I I can't judge it because I didn't see it. So yeah, I've not I've not seen it yet, but um, I have heard a lot about it. So be interesting to take a look. Um, Blue Satoshi here says please say, okay, I'm going to have to do this I'll have to do it in the drinker voice as well I've had it with this monkey fighting McLean on this Monday to Friday plane everybody strap in, I'm about to open some windows (laughs) 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 the um, yeah, the edits for for, um, snakes on a plane are amazing yeah, where they have to like bleep, they have to like replace all the fucks with something else. <laughs> it's have you like, seen the, the Star Wars inappropriate bleeps? No, or they just they no. just bleeping into words. It's, it's just like Anakin beep the kids. Yeah, I saw him beep that kid, and then he entered the beep. <laughs> it's just, it's really. Really well placed, and it's just fucking hilarious stuff. But it's just, just without just, just by beeping random, you know, random ing words. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. I'll need to take a look. Um, Charles Caballero says in the new trailer for Cobra Kai, there is brief image of the legendary hawk getting sucker leg sweeped by male feminist Dimitri, which I call BS given he won their fight, uh, due to reasons part two. Uh, right, so. Yeah, I'm trying to remember that from because I've watched the trailer for season three and I can't remember that part of it. But um, yeah, Dimitri's a pussy, man. Hawk needs to beat the shit out of him. Uh, also from Charles Caballero, here's my question. Do you believe the Cobra Kai writers are being lazy by giving Dimitri the same arc as Hawk in terms of being a bully? Uh, no, nah, I don't think they'll go the same direction with him. Um, he won't be as awesome as Hawk. I don't know if you guys, have you guys seen Cobra Kai? Mm-hmm. Um, Gary has, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. I, the first season's great. I thought the second season was good, uh, but I like the first season better. Yeah, I likewise. Uh, I like I love Stingray. <laughs> I think he's my new favorite. Yeah. Um, when when they're having a house party and it gets busted and he's got like two um, beer bottles like taped to his hands and he can't fucking open doors to escape. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh yeah, from also from Charles Caballero. The car, Charles Caballero. P.S. Congrats to Az on the new workout routine. Um, uh, give us twenty four months, <laughs> and then and then we'll see if it's congrats or um you fucked up. Are the gyms open for you, or are they closed yeah. down again? No, they they they're, they're open. They're open back in tomorrow. Ah, uh, okay. No, you're fine then. Uh, but then we've got one? a little bit of a Christmas break coming up. So I think I've got tomorrow, Monday, Wednesday, and then it's a week until I go back in after that. So I've got three sessions left until a week break. Yeah. Just trying to like do the most you can <laughs> before. That routine sounds like fake news. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a start. it's a start. Everyone's got to start somewhere. This is my start. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. On. I mean, you've, I've seen the pictures, man. You look like a dead man walking after you finished it. So um, you must be putting in the effort. Trying. So it'll pay off. But yeah, it's like, I've only been going back, what, two weeks since they reopened. So, uh, week, yeah, about a week and a half. Yeah, that's it. So it feels, it feels like it's been a lot longer, but they've only been open for about a week and a half. Mm. 
Oh, it sucks, like it really does. Um, mm -hmm. Stephen Otten here says, Hail Drinker and everyone in the chat. Loved uh, Die Hard 2. Just the type of action film I needed at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think you'd, anyone can watch this and enjoy it. Like it's, it's not as it's not as on point as the original one. Like the. I mean, it's you okay, know. <laughs> what? Anyone can watch this and enjoy it. Any Sarkeesian? Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Everyone except people like that. Yeah. Oh, she does. She, she in private. She fucking loves it. Yeah, she, yeah, she's yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah so it's all it's all fake. This whole thing's fake anyway. So yeah, in a private life, she's just like. Flicking the bean big to John McLean. Oh, talk dirty to me, John. Oh, I like you. You had all of them going. You had all of them going out there. <laughs> this is a five finger job. Yep. <laughs> um, Vladimir P Podobny. Do you need more time, as? <laughs> yeah, you, you good? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man, he's gone. <laughs> Got him. His face Got is him. turning as red as his shirt. So, yeah. you know, start the match. <laughs> <laughs> it's all gravy, baby. It's all gravy, baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, what's the year it's saying? Uh, let me buy you a drink, at least half of a drink. Thanks, Ben. Um, I thank you for the donation and the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, Seraphim Nexus here would have appreciated a heads up drinker. I would have made myself presentable. Uh, well, I, I didn't make myself presentable, so you know, you're fine. You're all right. Uh, the gay rascal. Yes, drinker is handsome, and I saw him first. There we go. Um, Thank you very much. Oh, drink of simps are coming out now. Mm -hmm. I know, this is it. I better get that bath water brewed up. <laughs> yeah. uh, don't shower for days. And yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. Well, what makes you think I do? No. <laughs> uh, Putin's, <laughs> Putin's Power Squat says, Finish Pride, our national prisoner, uh, Rennie Harlan, directed this one. Some gems and some turds, but for every cutthroat island, there's a cliffhanger. Yeah. Yes. Um, I like Cliffhanger. Great. Good film. Uh, uh, it's all right. It's all... Yeah. Very, uh, very much a 90s director, wasn't he, Rennie Harlan? Like... Yes, he was. Um... I always like Lithgow as a villain. He was so good in Dexter as Trinity. God, he was frightening. Frightening in Dexter. Yeah. Uh, Lithgow was a Lithgow, Lithgow is a great actor and he's mm -hmm. just fun in everything he does. Uh, Farewell Thunderchild says, Drinker, you failed me, oh. but maybe Az has listened to the War of the Worlds musical with Die yeah, Hard for me goes. War of the Worlds. Yeah. Farewell, Thunder Child. Is it is it good? The musical Jeffrey Wayne, War of the Worlds is fucking amazing. Absolutely fan fucking tastic. If you've never listened to it, uh, you want to listen to War of the Worlds uh, set to David Essex music and others. It's phenomenal. It's absolutely brilliant. I don't know how many times I've listened to it in my life. It must be over a hundred. Uh, Thunder Child is the best fucking song on there. Uh, this this great story of a, a boat called Thunder Child that actually manages to take out one of the tripods um, before it gets taken out himself. But uh, yeah, it's just it's superb and um, yeah, it's it's Jeffrey Wayne's War of the Worlds. If you kind of we're all similarish ages, give or take seven decades. But, uh, you know, you hey. we, <laughs> no, it's me. That's the one. Um, but, you know, I think as I think we all came across Jeffrey Wayne's War of the Worlds uh, when we were when we were younger. And it's it's God, if you haven't listened to it, seriously, stop watching the stream. <laughs> Just go get it. Listen to it. It's going to enhance your life. It's incredible. It's better than the Tom fucking Cruise film. It's better than. Um, well, not maybe as good as the book. The book's pretty fucking good. But it's just a crazy novel way to tell a story. 
um, using, you know, so it's, it's a music, essentially it's, it's War of the Worlds, the musical, and, and uh, the narration is phenomenal. Uh, the atmosphere, the music. I haven't thought about that in like as in decade, a couple decades. Mm. I haven't oh. thought about this thing. I, oh, I have sure. this record buried somewhere. I totally need to re-listen to that again. Yeah. Um, I remember oh, I, I, buying I it just because I like the cover. Word, word. The whole thing. You know, you just start me off on the song and I'll just be able to to, to continue it. And, and uh, yeah, god damn it. So good. So fucking good, man. Huh. Massive just recommend. Saying. Uh, I I love prog rock, prog rock, and and you know concept albums and stuff they don't do anymore because music isn't important anymore. So, uh, 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 direct to consumer, which is yeah. going to be the same thing that happens to movies. Uh, yeah, I had the I got I, we got the vinyl, the disc, the, you know the, we had the vinyl, we had the uh, CD, the cassette, <laughs> you know, we had it all. Uh, yeah, go get it. Cool, man. Um, Polaris Sucks here says, hello, gents. Hello to you, Polaris Sucks. Glad you can join us. Um, Blue Satoshi says, get it together, chat. Just imagine <laughs> just imagine Drinker in his underwear. Oh, no, he's hot. Fucking hell. This is... I feel violated from all of this, by the way. This is like Sims, harassment. Sims, Sims. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to hook up with Anita on, uh, on Twitter and be like, Hi. I understand. I understand where you're coming from now, Anita. I've, got I've been through it. And you've got a fax. <laughs> <laughs> She'll know uh, exactly what you mean. Yeah. Joss Amex. What about the ring? What about the ring drink? And you'll be like. Just the fax. She'd be like, treat the ring like this. Hang on. So the, the, <laughs> the one ring that's hanging off my my uh, my mic. Actually, that's that's my that's my old wedding ring. <laughs> my, my. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Gary, cast it into the fire. <laughs> Destroy it. <laughs> yep. I know. She, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> uh, Josh, Josh Amex says, much love from Texas drinker. Thank you, man. I'm sending my love to Texas as well. Uh Alpha Omega Records. Drinker, you need to upgrade from dial-up. <laughs> the lag is ruining your lovely face. Yes, I'm a simp. What are you going to do about it? Great stream. Thank you. Um, I I thought it was running okay, actually. People haven't been mentioning too many problems. Oh, I think... All, all, all stream. What's that? You've been out of sync all stream. <laughs> oh, fucking great. Awesome. Uh, I thought, like, stopping my, uh, stopping my video for a few seconds would put it right, but... Maybe not. Some, like, how come drink is like really out of sync and us is just fine? <laughs> yeah. Hey, 90 quid a month for mine. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. I think Nine, like when it, Yeah. That's oh, okay. 90 quid, which is 90 uh, pounds. That's about what I pay. Yeah. It's about what I pay. In American, like 130. Yeah. Oh, we can just do this. I'm fine. Nobody's out of sync. Yeah. <laughs> this is the this is the price I pay for like uh, going on camera. You see, I can either be in sync or out of sync. When it's just my icon, I'm always in sync. It's great. The way they're uh, simping, it doesn't matter what sync. Yeah, you're in they're sync. simping like you are in sync. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're fine. <laughs> Uh, Stephen Otten says, Die Hard 2, the women of McLean edition. <laughs> 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 yeah, we need to put a tribute together of like all the women in this uh, in this movie. Um, there's the air hostesses as well, which are surprisingly hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the news lady who was in Umbrella Academy, and she was also part of the lesbian kiss at the end of Fall of Skywalker, and she was also in Star Trek Discovery. 
What was she in Umbrella Academy? She was the uh, in the first season. Uh, I'm yeah. forgetting his name. The time guy went took off with her. Uh, she had the donut shop. Oh fuck me! Uh, yeah, the she years of not. She, she's she's not a spring chicken. That one. She's uh she's in her sixties. <sighs> this is yeah. this is what makes sad, right? When you you see an actress in something like Die Hard too, when she's young, obviously and and pretty. And then you don't see them in anything for like 20 or 30 years. And then you catch up with them again. And you're like, oh, time's a cruel mistress, right. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I see life happened. Oh. Someone had a tough paper round. <laughs> yeah. Uphill in Beirut. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Gary, we were just we were talking earlier. Like, we remember when McLean's wife, John McLean's wife, used to get some shit when we were younger. And then... Just saying to the critical drinker when I saw her and this is just like fucking hell, she's hot. She is smoking. Yeah, she, she's, she's a pretty she's an attractive lady. I'll give her that. Very attractive lady. Yeah. yeah. What was it? Is it her name Bonnie Bedalia or something like that? Yeah, Bonnie, Bonnie, yeah. Her name. Bonnie Bedalia, is it yeah? Something like that. I, I they can't they really remember. Strange. That was the one thing I hated about uh I mean, I, I liked um, uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. I thought it was pretty good. But I, I mean, I'm like, do they really have to be estranged again? I mean, that was a little much. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he fell completely apart after that. They they always do that in sequels. They That, that resolution they find, this was an 80s trope. Uh, anytime there were sequels, whatever girl that they, uh, they, our main character was after they were broken up or left or there was a new one or something. And maybe it was like a James Bond thing. They felt like they needed to do that instead of just it, because then that character doesn't really play much into it. So I don't know. Mm. It's been a while since I've seen Die Hard with a Vengeance. So it's been years since I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I, cause I, I, in I, this I, one, cause in this one, their relationship is solid again. Like they're very much yep. together and they're looking forward to being together. So, you know, them splitting up again and die hard with a vengeance just kind of makes no sense. It just comes out of nowhere. He the fax girl. He fucked her. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. And he had a baby with the, the news lady. Yeah. <laughs> and then she went off and snogged a woman. Yeah. Uh, the gay rascal here is saying, some people may not remember, but at that time you could walk up to a counter at the airport, get a last minute handwritten ticket and get on a plane. Yep. Uh, yeah, you can't do that now. That's for fucking sure. Yeah, it's like you can't get on any planes anywhere. Mm. Yeah, we were just talking about this at the start, Gary. Like, remember airports? <laughs> remember how you could go to them and like just get on planes and travel to other countries, and it was really cool and easy. Yeah. Um, I, I, we had tickets. We were pl we were supposed to go to the UK. Had to cancel that trip. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, I remember those days. Those were fun. Yeah. I was I was supposed oh, to be yeah. making out with William Shatner next year when he's he's over in Edinburgh. He's he's not coming now. So you know. Uh, I can't I can't simp for him anymore. What the fuck am I gonna do? But you so, know, actors can fly to New Zealand, you know, that's fine. Tom Cruise can shout at his crew. <laughs> Again, you hear he did it again. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The the crew is quitting. Some of the crew is quitting, and uh, I would have quit after the first one. That's what I said in my stream. I'm like, you know what? That's on the crew sitting there recording it like a little punk. I mean, like, I just don't take it. Is your job that important to have somebody talk to you like that? Like, nah, nah, nah. nah. It felt it felt very ego trippy from. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind that he did it. It's, 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 you, people yell. I mean, that's what uh, people adults do, and you just you either take it or you don't. And uh, I think he it's it's funny that he's taking the seventh Mission Impossible film this seriously, but it might be his last one. It might be his last two hour movie that goes in the theaters. Uh, I think that's yeah. something we need to think about now. That there's all these assumptions that there's going to be movies going into theaters uh, that i thought that was hilarious about disney announcing dates and they the only reason they did that was because warner brothers set the tone for hollywood and they're they're just not going to follow it because it's warner brothers uh but there's no movie theaters here in the states they're going to be open at full capacity next year at all for mm -hmm. the entire year. and if it changes yeah, like I, I will be shocked 
it, it's like the end of the blockbuster now. Yep. That we're kind of facing up to, and yeah, it's Tom Cruise is like your traditional movie star. Like he's been around forever, and he's one of the few actual movie stars left. Uh, and I suppose he's still in that mentality of like, well, we're we're mm-hmm. going to produce blockbuster movies. There's just no way to show them to people. You know, I don't know where you go from there. Uh, yeah, but it's a shame because I, I like I like the Mission Impossible movies. I really enjoy them. They've gotten better as they've gone on. Uh, I hated the first one. I mean, I, I okay, I liked it until the end when they made Mr. Phelps the bad guy. Then I was pissed. I was like, Fuck this movie, Fuck this franchise. Uh, I mean, it's like making Captain Kirk the bad, like they remake Star Trek and you make Captain Kirk the bad guy. I used to watch the TV show like religiously. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it as much as I watched Star Trek. I love Mission Impossible. Such a damn good show. Um, yeah, should, should you do science for example? Best theme song mm. ever. <clears throat> that is why. Dun, 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 a, dun, dun. a reoccurring character on a TV show, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. The the first two Mission Impossible movies were pretty weak, but then once you get past the third one, like then it really found its groove and it just, you know, it well, became that was, uh, really good. Seymour Hoffman, he he made the third one. Third one's fucking great. Yep. Yeah. Well, the second one is better known for uh giving Hugh right. Jackman the Wolverine job. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Do Gray's gone. Um, but you know, Do Gray's gone on to better things because he's now in oh. Batwoman. So. Legend. <laughs> Legend. Oh. oh, that trailer was so good. Oh my God. Bulls Trek, his description at the end like slayed me. Overweight eight year old. I can't see myself. It was so funny to listen to Bolstrek just completely lose it and just burst out laughing. <laughs> was Great character. I needed it. I needed oh, that. my God. I, needed it. I watched it. I needed it. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. And it was, you know, to see Dougray Scott in it, it's like you used to be a pretty sought after actor, you know, and now you're in this shite. Like, I hope they're paying you well, man, because you ain't going to get many offers after this. Is he the same age as Hugh Jackman? I think he's uh, older. He's a lot older now. Uh, I think he's in his fifties. Yeah, so I feel him on that one. I mean, it's like, hey, you know, he's, he's he looks great for. I mean, in his fifties, and and he probably would have been a. Nah, he wouldn't have been a very good Wolverine. Hugh Jackman. I, I don't Wolverine. think he. I don't think Duke Gray Scott would have got the physique for Wolverine. No, I don't think he would have put that amount of work in for it. No, Hugh Jackman's he's mental. Like he will get into a I mean, that's why he couldn't do it anymore because of the the, Hugh the Jackman. workout and the steroids and all the yeah. steroids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you hear our yeah. boy Henry Cavill uh pulled got injured mm. in, in Witcher. So they're filming everything around him now. Uh and and his ankle or something, cousin. Yeah, I just hope it's not gonna be you know, the Yennefer show when we get you, I'm someone arguing. Yeah, all why, anyway. it already was. yeah. I think this I, one. I mean, was- I, I, I mean, I enjoyed season one of the Witcher. I, I really, I thought they shot themselves in the foot a little bit with the non chronological storytelling, because I think right. that's a hell of a, an inaccessible way to start a new show. You know, like people are just trying to get into it and you're hitting them with all this crazy shit and there's no explanation for anything. Uh, that is, that is a tough sell. But I figured, mm-hmm. like, okay, it's teething problems. Like, they'll they'll settle into a more comfortable groove with their second season, um, and I hope they do because it would just, yeah, I think there's potential in the show. Henry Cavill is really good as Geralt, um, and the the girl that they've got to play uh, Yennefer is is a good actress as well. You know, she does a good job. Yeah, I I agree. <clears throat> uh, I think, I think the people who ran the show watched a little bit too much, uh, Mister Robot. And thought they would needed unreliable narrator in fantasy, and I'm like, mm. I mean, I, I figured it out. It took me a while to figure it out, but I figured it out. And the show got better as it went on, but it wasn't. I mean, you, you did a great review on it. Uh, I think it's like seventy percent good, and there's some wretched stuff in it, especially in that first episode. Oh my god, is you know that that little girl just talking about like female emancipation, and I'm like, I really, I mean, like that. This is not what. 
uh, and, and it felt like it was forced in, like, we really need to have a female perspective here in this feudalistic fantasy society. So I want to be more. It's like, I, and then we never saw her again. So it's like, they made it sound like she was going to be this big character. And then we never saw her again. That, that bugged me, but, uh, I got over it. We'll see what happens though. Yeah. I, I, I think we've seen the second season of everything go to crap. Okay. And it started with Westworld which you did a great video on drinker. That's that's I, I passed that video around everywhere. And then the second season of umbrella Academy. Uh, and, and it's just thankfully Cobra Kai that didn't happen. <sighs> yeah. Oh, like Cobra Kai oh is teetering. God. Honestly, it's teetering on the brink. I think like there was a hell of a lot of strong female characters that got introduced in, in season two. Um, yeah, Umbrella Academy, that just turned into absolute preachy woke garbage in season two. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was insufferable at times. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, hopefully The Witcher doesn't go down that path. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, oh, Westworld, another one. I fucking hate that show now. Like to go mm-hmm. from like one of my favorite shows in season one to just this this nonsense that they were trying to push in season three like what a fall from grace right god if you look at i i own season one and if you look at it as one season and it ends where it ends it's great it actually didn't need a season two it didn't need a season three it's fine just as one season uh yeah i i I, I, very rarely have i actively hated a, a main character and actually wanted them to fail as much as i have in westworld like mm-hmm. that that's what the show has done to me i felt so, like that way yeah. with Jennifer. i couldn't stand the bitch <laughs> I, really? I could not stand the bitch no i i thought she was okay like i, I kind of got where she was coming from um yeah i think maybe they went a little bit over the top with her but like i think they did manage to make her kind of sympathetic given what she'd yeah, been through i think that it started out i was worried that they were going to do the terminator dark fate thing and do the anti-natalist thing and then they flipped it and i was like oh that's kind of cool she wants to be a mom There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that you know uh and 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 the and that the only reason they did that is because the showrunner is a mom so otherwise i think it would have been full anti-natalist then i would have hated it but mm-hmm. uh we'll see again what happens witcher i'm a witcher I know the expanse hasn't done that yet, so uh pretty happy with that. Ah, no, good because I'm I'm only on season two at the moment and I've been loving it. Um and I'd heard mixed things about season four that it kind of goes a little bit off the rails, but it gets hopefully rushed. it's still entertaining. It gets rushed. Um and they're also adapting a book that's kind of rough to adapt. Uh but so far, man, the first three episodes are solid. And this is a pretty good book they're adapting to. So, hmm. okay, yeah, no, good stuff. Um, let's see here. Timothy Magoo says Die Hard Two was highly underrated, and you're hmm. one of the reasons I became a creator. I'll fuck off now. <laughs> cool man. Uh, I wish the best of luck with your with your um, being a content creator. And yeah, like we we kind of enjoyed Die Hard Two, so it's a good movie. Uh, so it's good to see it. people I enjoying it. Enjoy. I loved it. I fucking loved it. It was like uh, I, I I felt kind of sad, almost sad for watching it because I was just like just the sanitized shit that we have that passes for entertainment today, wow. and you just have this unapologetic uh, movie. Like I said, just every second words fuck. Men are telling women to fuck off. Women are telling men to fuck off. <laughs> uh, men men are smoking. People are drinking. People are flawed. Um, you know, gratuitous deaths. Uh, it was just, it was just great fun, a great escapist fun, and and I've missed that uh, feeling. I've just really missed that feeling of being taken away. Uh, I watched Discovery tomorrow, and it's I, I won't get through forty five minutes. I, last week I made four. I made four and a half minutes for I had to get up and do something, go away. Um, no, I find stuff to do. No, yeah. add. Drinker, if you took Henry Cavill and Tom Hardy and just pick an act- action director, give me those basic action with smoking, cussing, guns, girls, two hour, two hours, an hour, a-, a-, a little over an hour and a half at the at the bare minimum, yeah. it would it would be a huge hit. People would love it. 
and and again, unapologetic. Don't be PC in any way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. and just make a good old fashioned act, action flick. And I think it would be a huge hit. Yeah, women, absolutely. That's, that's what people want. It. Yeah, women yeah. Would love it as well. And it wouldn't take a lot. It, it wouldn't. I mean. But they refuse to do stuff. They're they're trying to force so much on us now. It's uh, it's 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 funny at this point. It's comical. I mean, just you know, just like that Batwoman trailer. You guys are mocking it, and we're at that point with Star Trek. It's it's hilarious how bad it is. Uh, you have to try really hard to be that bad. And I mean, uh, I, no, I oh, go on, sorry. Yeah, with 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 Discovery. Yeah, like I had to almost flip my mind and my perception of it, and just thought this is like a show designed for children it's written by children and the characters have got adult bodies but they are essentially people with the minds of child of children uh, and once you get to that point you can sort of understand where they're coming from but that's what it that's what it comes down to nobody acts like adults nobody acts like with any kind of dignity or professionalism uh or or anything like that and so you have to make that switch, otherwise the you can't even get through an episode, like as was saying, because you're just you're in constant conflict with what your brain is telling you you should be yeah. seeing and what you're actually getting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, once you yeah, do yeah. that, it's it's a blast. Like you can just <laughs> you just mock it for being ridiculous. Yeah, I mm -hmm. know. It, it, well, I mean, I can mock it for being ridiculous, but my, like you say, my brain just doesn't can't fathom that there's this technological starship of the future way beyond technology that we can even understand. And it's run by retarded children mm -hmm. who can't, who have emotional, massive emotional instability with pronouns with, pro with, can you call me? They, I, I can tell you to fuck off and fuck off. My <laughs> ship. How would you like me to do that? That would be good. My Mikey, my Mikey stock <laughs> action figure. <laughs> she's Somebody she's got that it. fucking that same sour expression yeah. that, that that Michael's got. Oh man, it's just um, yeah. Like a few weeks ago, I did um, Star Trek: The Motion Picture with with Robert Meyer Burnett, and watching that and watching how the crew conduct themselves and how people act like real adults and make intelligent decisions, it was like God damn! Like it's just a completely different universe from what we're being presented now. You know, it, it's, it really it's is. so it's worlds apart. But then yeah. they weren't trying to make films where they were inserting their own uh, current day sensibilities in uh, and attitude and, and behavioral patterns. They were saying, no, this is a, a starship of the future set in this date with this captain, with this pedigree that's going on this mystery. Uh, and now you just got, you know, you got fucking Bay area people walking around fucking discovery going, Oh my God, these you fixed a thing. These I know these call me. They, them, these. And it's just like, I, I will fucking mace you and then smash your face in with a hammer. And I, I will feel good about it. I will feel good about it. I really will. Making the world a better place. Yeah, they, yeah. they are just horrible fucking people. They, they write scripts now. They write characters to create discourse. Now, I mean, that's the whole. I mean, the whole motivation uh, behind Doctor Who was to, to. Oh my God, we're gonna we're gonna make so many people upset, and then we can shame them when they're mad. It's gonna be great. You know, yeah. yeah. Imagine having that kind of mentality and that kind of relationship with your own audience, whereas I'm I'm literally just doing what I do to piss people off. You know, rather than I'm gonna I'm gonna endeavor to create something really inspiring and interesting and thought provoking. It's like, nah. Well, you, you're just gonna, gonna just gonna own, own the fanboys. Mm -hmm. It's remember, it's that it's not just piss people. Off. You're pissing off the right kind of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because yeah. they're already anti you anyway. So this is this is this will stick it. This is another one. This this will stick it. To, it's like DC Comics. Oh, this will stick it to them. The person who can't write for shit, we're going to put on our flagship character. Yeah. 
genius genius business decisions they really are we, we hate chris pratt because he's a christian and a conservative we're going to make his guardians of the galaxy character that he plays in films bisexual that. i'll stick it to him because he's a christian heteronormative yeah. yeah it's like you your lives are you're broken you are you well, are broken people this, if I this think is your life and this is the way that you think and behave, you you are actually broken in twain. I, yeah. I don't know who can fix you because oh, a I giant can... hole. There's a giant hole in there's anybody's soul who oh. uh, who needs a pronoun. Period. I mean, if that's what you need for uh, to feel valid as a human, uh, that is a you problem. That is not a me problem. How about yeah, I do? How about I do. Pronouns? I do love Elon Musk on Twitter because he just keeps poking that hornet's nest and he does not give a fuck. No. <laughs> it's Why would great. You? Why would you? Yeah. It's it's amazing because they yeah, once you once you go down that road it just brings out the most horrible, toxic, hateful people on the planet and he just does not care. I demand that you talk to me you you know, uh, name me this. No, man, you, you want to be named that. That's your game to play. I don't have to play with your toys. I don't give a fuck about your toys. I don't give a fuck about your pronouns. If you think you're fucking fluid or or what is it? What they call gender neutral? Whatever, just look at your pants. You'll you'll sort things out for you quite quick. You'll figure out what you are. Just it's it's a it's a cry for attention. It's a it's a, a a way of being a victim. Uh, it's a way of playing the gotcha game. Uh, it's a way of shaming people so you can cancel and dogpile them. It's just a, it's a weaponization. It's just a weaponization of you being a twat. Uh, the whole uh, the whole Elliot Page thing was fucking terrible. If you went through the statement, uh, it was just this is who I am. This is what I want to be. Great, fine, good on you. You know. I don't give two fucks about your life. You be what you want. Uh, but then it started going, and this is the, the, there's a load of intolerance against us. We're fighting against it. It's just like, we're, we're just, we're fucking get somebody back. lacks meaning. So she's trying to feel exactly, the, you know, the, the non fluid binary gender, whatever the hell it is, is they're all crazy constructs for bored, affluent people. Yeah. That all lack meaning in their life. Just, I'm, I'm sorry. Your dad didn't give you a hug. I'm sorry you didn't get a fucking pony, you know, when you were 16. Uh, I'm sorry that at school uh, you didn't get the grades that you wanted. I'm sorry that the boy that you fancy didn't fucking finger you around the back of the bike sheds and went for Jane instead. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm sorry all about all of this, but, you know, you don't demand what the fuck I call you. I'll call you what the fuck I want. So shut the fuck up with your pronoun bollocks. We need to make them all watch Die Hard and Commando and yep. maybe a bit of Face Off mixed in. <laughs> That'll sort yeah. them right out. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a rabbit hole indeed. Um, Mesa, Misa Sub 77 here says, my eight-year-old son's favorite Christmas movies, Die Hard 1 and 2 and Lethal Weapon. Oh, Excellent choices boy. all around. Yeah. Man, I need to talk about Lethal Weapon sometime. Fucking love that film. Uh, Brad Perkins, drinker, you precocious yet pragmatic pugilist of pop culture. Have you heard of Ailstorm? <laughs> yes, I fucking have. A great band from Scotland, all about pirates and drinking. Yeah, Ailstorm are fucking awesome. Um, I think my favorite song of theirs is Fucked with an Anchor. <laughs> it's <Nice>. great. <laughs> Look it up, it's brilliant. Uh, yeah, Ailstorm are great. They do pirate metal. Um, Popo. Papa Yaga here says, damn drinker is handsome. Would love to replicate the Apollo slash Rocky Beach scene with you. <laughs> Sim simple, Sim simple. <laughs> As you and I, we'll run down the beach together. We'll film it in slow motion. It'll be great. Well, yeah. we'll get partway down. Well, I'll get partway down, then collapse. Just like, oh, over. <laughs> oh, we need this to happen. You, Make you, you, it you happen. <laughs> Chat. F's in the chat to make this happen. This yeah. needs to be. It needs to be on the internet. It will. Uh, it will. It will. It might actually make the world a better place. I think it will. I, what I'm going to do? I need to get my T-shirt and like, like, cut it right across there. So I've got like a crop yeah. top, like a polo hat. It's going to be crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Any. No, that would be the death of my my life. That would be it. That would be it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the last time anyone ever saw me ever again. And we never <laughs> saw as again. Uh, don't worry, it'll be like a year before we can even like go in the same location as each other. So you've got plenty of times to get in shape. Um, Give me two. Yeah. Ed Star here says they don't make movies like they used to. Indeed, they do not, sir. Um, Malia Alien says, you didn't tell us you were hot as fuck. Oh, fucking hell. You were hot as fuck. <laughs> with Simple what? How? Simple uh, I'll eat your uh, I, I, I should have I stayed behind my, my icon. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm too hot. I'm just too, <laughs> too hot for my chat. I, I should have, I should have stood behind my little critical drinker logo because now I show my face, I'm too fucking hot for my chat. Yeah, is, is this where I need to humble brag? It's like, oh god, all these super chats of talking about how hot I am. God, what a nightmare! A zombie unicorn. Did you see zombie unicorn yesterday? Begging for an award. Yeah. I I'm like, I like work and stuff, and like, I do things and i think like i deserve recognition because i'm like a oh god what does she call herself now a non-binary bisexual bloody bint or whatever i don't know what some stupid uh but i know <clears throat> i think like vote, <laughs> vote awardsies for me <laughs> is she um yeah is she the one who just does body painting so essentially yeah. she's stripping on camera oh. She's the Bold one who do, shames women who do um, work like uh, what they call booth babes, uh, stuff like that. And then she gets her tits out and paints them blue and says, it's not sexual. Yeah. The, just, and then uh, takes photos of her ass and sticks it on Instagram. You know, stuff like that. Just massive hypocritical cunt. Yeah. Grifter's got a grift. Grifter's got say. a grift. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as is a, Stephen W. <laughs> As is a forex large version of right said Fred. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it's pretty spot on, actually. <laughs> I'm nowhere near sexy for my shirt. <laughs> nowhere near <laughs> sexy for my shirt. No, I'm sexy in hurts. <laughs> uh. Stefan W says, "Cheers, oh, mates, drinker." Drinkers too sexy for his chat. <laughs> what you think about that? He's a model, you know what I mean, and he does his little thing on the catwalk. As oh, you're oppressing me, you're oppressing me. Stop, <laughs> stop harassing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Sorry, it, hold on. Yeah, bully hunters. Uh, yeah, I need your help, man. This this guy oh, won't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I've seen that bully hunter two four one is after me now. No. <laughs> just as goes kind of blank. Game, bully hunters. Yeah, yeah. Just get. Oh wait, no, they're here. They're here. Oh my god! He's been taken out. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the bully. Well done. Uh, what have we got here? Yeah. Cheers, mates. Drinker, could you review Bronson? Tom Hardy delivers as usual. For me, a kind of clockwork orange movie for the 2000s. Have you watched it? Uh, yeah, I have. He's like batshit crazy in this. Um, great film. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Bronson, but um, Tom mm. Hardy's awesome in it. Like, Charles Bronson's a legit fucking nutcase. Like, he's one of the most famous prisoners in the UK. Just spent most of his life in and out of jail, and uh, yeah, he's he's a right character, and Tom Hardy plays him great. So, oh, yeah, I gotta good watch movie. that. Then. Uh, Smash Whiskey says, "Love your content, long time listener. Any thought given to reviewing the crap Avengers game that farted onto console and PC this year? It's awful, <laughs> and I'd love to hear your thoughts." Yeah, I heard it was a fucking disaster. I, I don't think I would want to bother with it, honestly, because there's so many other games that I want to play. I still want to play Final Fantasy VII Remake. 
Uh, I want to complete oh. Ghost of Tsushima, and I want to play Cyberpunk 2077 when they actually get it working. Mm. Oh, Cyberpunk. Oh, dear. Yeah, that sounded bad. That was a bad day for them yesterday. Uh, not yep. giving refunds, bending the knee to China. China! And, uh, China. and yeah, and lying. A lot of lying. <laughs> There's a lot of lying, lot of lying, going, lying on. going on. The idea that games companies would lie to us? What? I think I got an email. I know. Saying so that, terrible. Uh, even GOG refused them a refund. And GOG is owned by CD Projekt, right? Uh, I'll have to find, I'll have to find and go through that email. Uh, the Fighting Fedora here says, Drinker, you're a lot less septic looking than I pictured you. That's just lighting. Yeah, I'm actually yellow from all the, the liver cirrhosis. Nice. Uh, Tarmanel says, thanks for good work. Some chance on Total Recall, the original, or Conan the Barbarian? Yeah. Um, oh, I love Conan. Both great movies. And mm. I definitely like to do Total Recall. That's fucking great fun. I watched uh, another it. great. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, if you like Robocop, you're going to love Total Recall, another Paul Verhoeven classic. Mm hmm. Uh, Starship Troopers. For... Don't you think um, Clone Wars has kind of got a bit of a Starship Troopers beginning to it? I think they've kind well, of. I mean, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it made me think of it uh, mm -hmm. when I saw it. Oh man, Total Recall is one of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah, oh, that's great. I, yeah, it's round up with my mates breaking yeah. the law the other week, and uh, we just saw Total. He was just flicking through his, um, you know, device, movie device, and we were like, oh, Total Recall. I was like, Do you know what? I'm we both went. You know, we're really in the mood. We we need to. So we just put Total Recall on. It's like fucking great. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, oh, it's got three three titties in it as well. Like. It's better than two, yeah. Three, yeah. Sharon Stone in that, yeah, yep. Oh, Carella. Back in the day, she was gorgeous, absolutely hot, beyond hot. Yeah, it's like I I would have stuck with her if I was Quaid. It's like, no, you can you can wipe my memory if she gets to be my wife. Uh, yeah. I don't think uh, yeah, I don't think that bit on Mars is measuring up to her. The whole thing's a dream. <laughs> Yeah, because he's getting lobotomized, doesn't he? And that's the white light at the end of the movie. No, no, no. He, he's 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 just he's just still in. It's all a dream, because if you if you look at things closely, Melina appears on the screen before he goes under, and it's the Melina that he has in the in the dream. So yep. the whole thing that happens in Total Recall is a fabrication. It is what he wanted. He yeah. went to Recall yeah. and he got his he got his thing, and then. She, he says, you know, is, is this just a dream? She's like, kiss me. And then and then the kissing and then the light comes. That'll be him coming out of his... But there you go, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Quaid, for your yep. uh, for your services. Enjoy your, enjoy your, you know, Sharon's fucking Sharon Stone again. Mm. What have you been feeding this thing? Blondes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Arnold is awesome in that movie. Oh. Yeah, one one day I'll review it. It'll be a good film to do. Um, what's the next See you one? The party right yeah. There. yeah, that is a horrible way to go. I guess his arm's like broken off by the elevator. And then <laughs> he'd probably still be alive, and then falls to his death. Yeah, yeah, a couple hundred feet at least. Uh, another question from Putin's Power Squad for all of us: Are you guys into westerns and samurai film favorites? Oh, samurai film, definitely. Wolf and Cub stuff was great. That's why I love The Mandalorian. Um, but I used to love <laughs> used to, westerns. Uh, westerns. Um, I used to. Look, I love the older westerns, and I'm not massively keen on modern westerns. Uh, you know, I like to. I like the older kind of kind of stuff, like Magnificent Seven and shit like that. Which again, it's Seven Samurai. Yeah. Seven it's Samurai. So there you go. That's that's Outlaw so Josie Wales. Yeah. Outlaw Josie Wales. Awesome. Mm. Awesome move. Some of the best yeah. lines. I liked um High Plains Drifter and Pale Rider. Both excellent westerns. Um and I really liked Unforgiven. I did a review on that. 
Don't forget great, it's brilliant. Uh, uh, Tombstone's my favorite. Uh, but I like Silverado and but Tombstone is like it. That is number one with me. The um the Dollars trilogy I love as well. Yep. The yeah, those spaghetti westerns were great. God, um Van Vanya Secundus says that room is far too clean and tidy. Okay, drinker, whose house have you broken into? Uh, yeah, I am actually live streaming from Tatiana's place, so I'm all right. Hey. Wow, she's hey. got a shit together. Just, uh, yeah. just stay out of shot, stay out of shot. Um <laughs> very well. <laughs> Farewell, Thunder Childs. My God, drinker, you can cut diamond with that chin. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a beard. Uh, Steve Hart. Hey, drinker, loved your It's a Wonderful Life video. How far have you got through the mm-hmm. expanse now? Uh, yeah, so I'm a few episodes into, uh, into season three. Totally loving it. Um, great show. And I'm really pissed off that I've waited so long to start watching it but I'm looking forward to reviewing it. And yeah, It's a Wonderful Life. I fucking love that movie and it just makes me feel happy every time I watch it. So I waited like a year to get around to reviewing it for Christmas. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. I was uh, playing a bit of Destiny and uh, watching that, listening to that video and uh, it was great. It was, that was a great listen. Yeah, it was... Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, going back to what you were talking about earlier when we we talk about doing characterization properly, like... A film that spends essentially 90 minutes just setting the stage for a character so you understand where they're coming from when the actual main story kicks off. Like, damn, that's that's some serious groundwork you're putting in there. And this movie does it and it, it pays off so well by the end. So yeah, I miss films like that. Mm-hmm. Um, also Black Steve- It's a Wonderful Life. Great song. Yeah. Uh, uh Stephen Otten says, am I the only one who screams liquid metal when Robert Patrick gets shot? <laughs> you just expect like the bullets to go right through him or something. You know? Yeah, just because he gets up, comes through the grate, just like yeah. melts through the grate. Oh my <laughs> god. Uh, yeah, it was good to see him in this though. We were saying earlier how bloody young he looks. Like, mm-hmm. you know, even, even from Terminator 2 when he's, you know, it's only like a year or two later, but yeah, he looks so much older than that somehow. Um, His grandma Phantom used Mer- to come into my video store. Uh, I used to work at the warehouse, and I managed the video department in San Marcos, which isn't far from here. And his Grammy would come in and rent videos and go, you know, my grandsons, uh, my two grandsons, one's the Terminator, and the other one's the lead singer in a rock band, and he used to be in Nine Inch Nails. And I'm like, wow, you did good. That's awesome. She was really sweet. Yeah. That, that's a cool that's a cool story man I like that Runnies are awesome. um what's the next one phantom mercenary why was colonel S- william stewart doing naked karate yeah we don't know characterization the man is dedicated i want my john my twig and berries hanging out while i'm doing splits and getting ready I, were they Showing that he's a psycho, maybe? Are we trying to establish that like he's a dedicated psycho? That's the only thing I got out of it. I mean, I, can, I, I assume I so. naked, and I don't think I'm a psycho. But do you do you Tai Chi while you're doing it? I have a wank. Uh, okay. Well, that's good. That's <laughs> good. I mean, it's I good think. exercise. It's a workout. Yeah. I we, like to have my we were, stuff, um, not hanging when I'm doing workouts. It's just like it's a thing, you know. There's yeah. a lot of well, the people, the, and things that can happen. The, yeah, the people in my gym really frown upon it. So <laughs> yeah, they yeah they actually want you. I mean, like, <laughs> what if you go and just wear a mask? <laughs> I'd wear my mask. I'm, uh, that's it. Yeah. Oh, you want me to wear clothes too? Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's like can't get mad. I'm not breaking the, the lockdown rules. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking the law, but not very, but not lockdown rules. Yeah, um, Stephen Otten says here, uh, Die Hard Two: The Snow Globe Edition. Uh, yes, there's a hell of a lot of snow in this one. It's mm-hmm. it's just never stops throughout the whole movie. Make uh, it Nathan- snow. Make it snow. Make it snow. Make it snow. Nathaniel Larson, how many Die Hard films are actually Christmas films? Uh, only the first two, I think. Only the first two. 
Three is set in the middle of summer because there's like a heat wave or something. Four uh, seems like summertime as well. Five, fuck knows. That's in a fantasy world where nothing makes sense. <laughs> well, I did. What was five about? I didn't even see it. Neither so, did I. It's like it was nuclear fun, right? weapons like or something. Yeah, it's in Russia. And in then Russia. they go to Chernobyl. They go to Chernobyl or something to recover like nuclear weapons that have been dumped there. I don't, right. I don't know. Yeah, I just remember it being really silly and Bruce Willis looking really uncomfortable and bored. He probably was. He was probably just very bored and said, "He's like, when am I getting paid?" Yeah. What What's the minimum number of scenes I can be in to collect my paycheck? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then that battery commercial that came out a little while ago was better than yeah. anything. Got everybody all excited. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Denzel Kanu says, Drinker, could you eventually do a live stream on any of the Riddick movies? Uh, could you do? Yeah. I like Pitch Black. Um, Chronicles of Riddick's pretty garbage. And then the third one's just a bit meh. It's got but, Katie, yeah. Katie Sackhoff's titties. Well, there is that. She's a bit old now, though, so I don't know. No, she's just turned 40. No, I don't know. She's like 38. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe maybe just 40. No, I think she might have just hit 40. Maybe. I think it's because Battlestar Galactica was so fucking long ago. Yeah, just hit 40. Just hit 40, yeah. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. I love Casey. She's a good Uh, one. Yeah. She's a good one. She's a good laugh. Um, Sandman says, "Run, runner." Says, uh, "One-liners was so '80s, but it was done with almost self-deprecating humor, so people loved it. Love the diehards, even number five Shakespeare, compared to what we have today." Uh, well, that is true, yeah. Yeah, give me, give me uh, one-liners over bad attempts or or, or uh, at Whedon speak. Uh, uh, what we get and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's that you know that engineer in Star Trek Discovery, played by like, Tig Navarro. Oh fuck! Uh. Like that is like the prime example of like trying to trying to jump in with, with funny dialogue, and it just it lands like a fucking like elephant. Lead. It's just yeah, yeah. It's just a nightmare. It doesn't uh, feel yeah. like she's she's legitimate. It feels like she's literally a person. Like, hey, I'm just being a prick on a Star Trek show. Yep. I oh, fuck off, Tig, you twat. That's <laughs> like having Don Rickles on. Uh, I mean, yeah. And Don Rickles, okay, Don yes, Rickles. please. Yeah, Don Rickles would have been great, though. He would have been fantastic. Apparently, she's right. Come anyway. Uh, Sources say. <laughs> Yeah. Stephen Otten says, I met the actor that played Al. He I was an extra in a movie that he was in. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Very Tell us more about cool. Al. I want to know more about him. Reginald Vell Johnson. Uh Alien Life. Seems like an awesome guy. Hmm. Uh Keith Gray, they live. Great movie. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Fucking rowdy rowdy uh, piper. Rowdy rowdy yeah. piper. Fucking best best punch up scene in in all of cinema. Uh, n- Node the fox. Hey drinker, just wanted to say thanks for your wonderful life vid. I was having a rough time of it this morning, and thanks to that vid, I watched the movie and ended up feeling much better. Aww. That's the effect that, that that movie has on people. You always feel better after watching it. So I'm glad I could help. Um, Beer man. There are two kinds of people: those who think Die Hard is a Christmas movie, and those who are wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> It's the Christmas movie. Uh, DMC Campbell. Hey, Critical Drinker. Recently subscribed to your channel. You have amazing content and your knowledge of film is top notch, sir. I don't know. You wouldn't think so because whenever people ask me about movies on live streams, it's always films that I've never seen. So I'm like, oh, fuck, I haven't seen that yet. No, I try to I try to at least study the films that I'm going to review. So there's that. Uh, David Drift, Merry Christmas to you both. I enjoy your work. May next year be better than any year before. Yeah, well, it can't be much fucking worse than this year, so it's it's up uphill from here. Uh, 
Aussie Drop Bear, can you and Az please review Sudden Death with Jean-Claude Van Damme? The two of you would be perfect for that movie. <laughs> I'd love if we're doing if we're doing Jean-Claude Van Damme, we've got to do either kickboxer or blood sport. Ah, oh, kickboxer is incredible. Yeah. <sighs> I'd forgotten about those movies. Yeah, those those Van Damme movies where basically everyone was him just being put into a fighting tournament. Awesome. Yeah. And doing the splits for Kumite. no reason. Yeah. Kumate. 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 Uh, Night King 01. You guys should do a live stream on Total Recall to celebrate the 30th anniversary. Hmm. I think that's, that's a possibility then. Um... Black Douglas, Shit, Die Hard. I got five kids to feed. Yeah, <laughs> you got me. I ain't even married. Yeah. With his yeah. fucking arm that like folds out. Yeah. It's Quato that always freaks me out in that movie. Hell yeah! He just like open shirt up and it comes out of him. I'd yeah. shoot him in the fucking head if I had a chance. Yeah. Well, it's like where it's like, take my hand, Mister Quaid. I'm like, Ugh, I'm not fucking touching you. Hey. <laughs> Stop being tolerant. Tell him he's awful. Tell him he's fucking horrible. <laughs> what does Quato identify as? Who knows? Mm. A homesick abortion? Elliot Page. I identify <laughs> as Elliot Page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Black Douglas here says Die Hard 3 is a lot better. Is it? I mean... I feel like Die Hard 3 is probably the better movie. I just have more fun with 2. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Mm, I don't... Rec- I I mean, it's... I remember seeing it in the theaters, and then I bought it later and watched it later, and I still didn't think it was better in Die Hard 2. I think it's better structured. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, yeah, if you want to look at it at a technical... I mean, like, Die Hard 2 is a is a ridiculous schlocky action film, but I mean, not schlocky and it's, it's put together, but like that end, you know, yeah, he blows up a plane with a Zippo lighter, but that's, that's, the, that's <laughs> in contact with the time. That's, we didn't expect Uber realism. We wanted our action star to kick a lot of ass yeah. and a yippee ki motherfucker and blow up a plane. That's what that, that they gave us exactly what we wanted. <laughs> Just swear, yeah. blow up planes, we'll be happy. That's all That's we good. want. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Hey, uh, fuel is flammable. That's that's good enough for me. Yeah. There is there is yeah. a logic there. And yeah. also the Maybe amount it's... of cocaine done on the set of that film was probably <laughs> legendary. So. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't snow. That was just the coke. Just, yeah. the, <laughs> just raining coke. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta keep the energy up. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Mayuk go, Basu go. says, uh, "Drinker, you looker and a half." <laughs> so after part two, which among the next three Die Hard sequels do the both of you like? Couldn't be the last one. That movie was atrocious, except for that hot bike girl. Yeah, I mean for me, it's, it's probably three after part two. Like four was just so bland, I barely remember it, and five was just a ridiculous cartoon nightmare. So yeah, it'd be three for me. I think probably everyone's like that. I totally yeah. agree. Four is we like so one, bland. One, three, three. I was sitting there trying to remember four. I mean, I know I saw it. I would just it's like the stupid plane bit, and it's just like that. It's so fucking dumb. Yeah, no, the the only thing I could tell you about four, it's got something to do with computers, like and yeah. hacking and stuff. That that's basically all I oh, got for you. God. Oh, who is it? was Timothy Oliphant in it? I think Kevin yes, Smith was. in it, isn't he? At one point. Yes. Yeah. Now I remember Timothy Oliphant was in it. Yeah. Uh, and he, he did stuff. That's that's pretty much it. Um, Raven K says, Hi, Drinker and Az. Have a happy holidays, dudes. Thanks, man. Um, Jingle bell. Rans- yeah. Ransom G, just watched your It's a Wonderful Life video, Drinker, and it made me as teary eyed as the movie. And highly Aww. recommend 12 Angry Men for you. How was Quigley Down Under? Vid coming soon. <laughs> Well, I don't know if we'll get a vid on it, but it was an okay movie. It was it was a, a nice old fashioned western action film, you know, set in Australia for some reason. Uh and Tom Selleck is always entertaining, so I'll give it that. Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. I love Crocodile Dundee. I love Crocodile Dundee. Oh my god, I love that movie. It's great. 
how can you not like Crocodile Dundee? It's just the, it's just fun. The second one was a bit much, but uh Do you know he's yeah. just he's just divorced from her in real life. Like really? Oh my god. Ago. That so is, they were that together. They were together for a good time. Yeah, they were together for divorced a good now. I mean, like, I don't. Yeah, they must really hate each other then. I mean, you got in this long, you're together. Wouldn't yeah, like they can't have many more years. They married, you know. Uh, yeah, it must be for tax reasons or something like that. There was Although a third crocodile. Sorry, there was a third one, wasn't there? There was a third oh. crocodile Dundee in like L.A. Never, or something. Never saw it. Never, never saw yeah, that. never seen it. That was made like yeah. quite, like. 20 years later or something though, wasn't it? Yeah, I think he was just really old and tired by that point. Probably shouldn't have done it. And and he um, got popular for, for doing Australia commercials. That's it was tourism commercials that got him all popular over here. Uh Foster's Lager. Mm. That's what and La- yes, and the uh, Foster's Garden Lager. Yeah. Which Lager. was as the very last alcoholic drink I had. Oh wow. I like a Foster's. Me. To answer your trivia questions, it was, last time I drank was a long time ago, and it was inside a church, and it was a Foster's Golden Lager. Nice. Wow. That's how you checked out of the boozing world. That's how I checked out of the boozing world after breaking into a church, getting really, really effed up. <laughs> I was praying to God in the church. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, what the hell is this name? Mayuk Bazu says, also, Drinker, would you consider showing off that handsome mug of yours in your videos um, after the barrage of compliments that you're getting here? Uh, <laughs> I mean, most of the time it's just laziness because then when you're going to be Makes appearing in a video, so hard. yeah, you've got to set up lighting, you've got to get the sound right, and uh, it's, it's yeah, I, I try to avoid it. That's why I just do voiceover. For the most part, and it maintains the air of mystery about the drinker. Um, um, I tried to go back at one time. I really did. I was in uh, I was in Italy, and I'm like, you know, I just brought my uh, Surface Pro, so I'm like, I'll just do a bunch of audio videos. You know, I don't have to show myself. Uh, and dude, that, no, no, they were not having it. I, I was like, really? what? I'm like, I'm nothing great. I mean, like, you're it, you, honestly, it's better with, and, and no, I was like losing subs and shit. So, yeah, if you go down that road, you can't, it's going to be hard to go back. Yeah. Damn, man. Yeah. I, be, I better put I, myself off now. No. I think it took, uh, <laughs> I did YouTube for two years before I put camera on. Really? Just voiceover before idea. that? Two years of voiceover, and then don't know why the fuck I decided to put the camera. <laughs> Should have just. Yeah, well, why not? I thought I yeah, everyone wants to see a bald <laughs> fat fuck. <laughs> the world, the world needs more of these making <laughs> videos on the internet. There's not enough. Well, I think um, look, when I was on Friday Night Tights, like I. I put my camera on because like everyone else was doing it. I was like, oh, cool. I'll do it too. Um, but everyone's like, oh shit, it's a drinker face reveal. And I was like, I've, I've never tried to hide my face before. It was just laziness that meant I couldn't, mm-hmm. I didn't have my camera on. Like I wasn't like trying to remain incognito or anything like that, but now, ah, well, um, prodigal turd here says happy holidays for, to a couple of handsome gents. Thank you. And I hope you have an awesome holiday too, prodigal turd. <laughs> Uh, Gene Dirtle says Sadler's character is based on the real life Colonel Oliver North. Yes, I was thinking about that. Um, the Iran Contra scandal in the 1980s, selling arms to the Contras in Nicaragua. Uh, yeah, I, I assumed that it was something like that because Sadler's character, like Stuart, I think his name is, he's kind of been disgraced by the the scandal of like um, Esperanza getting deposed. Because you see him in news footage where he's like there signing treaties with him and all that. So he was obviously linked to the guy. Um, kind of similar deal then. He was obviously the guy who set it all up. Yeah. <clears throat> the fall guy. The fall yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, Claudio Rogojan says, also Franco Nero is Italian playing South American. Oh, my God. Well, hey, you had a white guy beating up a black guy at the end of the movie, too. Can't have that. Yeah. Got sucked into a, a, a turbine 
on a plane Turbine. as well. Yeah, and, and somehow that didn't blow the freaking shit up. I don't yeah. know. How. Maybe not. Yeah. You know, maybe I. Yeah. What do I know? Yeah. Um, the Black oh, Douglas says, "What do you think of birds? Have got to go through them like all the time." Yeah, they're they're designed to withstand that. Because they actually test them, I think they fire chickens into them or something like dead ones from like a cannon. And wow! Imagine if that was your job, like shooting dead chickens at a turbine engine. I mean, it would be cool, like just to see what happened. It'd be like it's like those. Well, it's like those will it blend videos, you know. No. <laughs> what a fax machine. A fax machine. Yeah. <laughs> Would a human go through it? I don't know. Um, I don't think they've tested that. Um, the Black Douglas asking, what did you think of Tom Cruise's rant? Um, I mean, personally, like, I sort of understand why he was doing it because whatever he thinks of like the the laws and the restrictions on whatever they're doing, you know, he knows that if they get caught breaking those rules, then the entire movie is going to get shut down. And so if he spots people that are just like blatantly disobeying what they're supposed to do, and maybe they've done it like three or four times already that day, yeah, it's inevitably he's going to lose his shit sooner or later. Not exactly the most professional behavior, but there it is. I think there's a way to speak to people and there's a way not to speak to people. And uh, if you, if there's like, there were two people who were closer than two meters by a computer screen, you could have had those taken into an office and spoken to. Um, and then you could have just made a an announcement to the staff saying, look, you know, it's imperative that we maintain the uh, COVID rules. People are starting to break them. And, and, I'm just going to have to fire you if you do, because this is this is exceedingly important. I think the way that he he did it was completely out of order. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of money riding on it, but Cruz. I mean, for all you know, for all Tom Cruise, he, he he's a he's mental. The guy's fucking mental. Um, you know, all the shit that he gets involved with Scientology is just is actually crazy. Uh, and so I think I legitimately think films like this are just complete vanity projects for him. And, and I think his desire to get this done is more of a, a, a selfish desire than a uh, than a desire for, um, you know, to to have it out to you know, the film crew completing it and then putting their kids through college and getting paid and all that. I think that's just a convenient fucking excuse for him. But yeah, he's he's in with his, you know, it's it's his money, it's his buck. But Jesus Christ, where to speak to people? There, there is. Mm. Uh, the, I mean, like I've been spoken to like that when I was younger, and I did learn something. So it depends on what they say. I mean, yeah, you're right. It could have easily just been what he said without yelling. He could have said it, said it once, going, you know, this is going to cost you. You guys are going to get fired if you do this again. Just do it like that. It would have probably been more effective is say exactly what you said without the yelling and the F-bombs. Look them straight in the face. Get some boundaries set up. Uh, honestly, once you find it, because I because like I thought of it one way until I found out it was just two guys looking at footage with their masks on. I'm like, ah, yeah, then that's way over the top. And he's being an egomaniac. But you know what? That's Hollywood. You just got you just got to peek into what what Hollywood used to be like all the time every set movies you've never heard of piece of garbage movies had a director yelling at people just like that and it's all part of that they know you want to work there and that you will put up with a certain amount of abuse and there's certain sadistic mfers who get off on that kind of power so that kind of thing happens all the time and and i saw it in post-production and and like i worked in metadata so it was like bottom of the barrel you know 20 bucks an hour uh working next to the vault and i was basically running a checklist over um over blu-rays and dvds uh yeah i did some editing i did some nice fun stuff too but a lot of the grunt work i did and i saw people treating that like they were making 
the next Star Wars trilogy. You know, like they were working on the most important thing in the world. And it was like, you know, uh, Mars needs moms. <laughs> you know, I saw somebody get screamed at for Mars needs moms in the vault, which is, again, you're making 20 bucks an hour. You're not even a permanent employee. <coughs> you're, you're contract. That's Hollywood. Uh, so, I mean, what Tom was doing was completely normal for that town. Uh, yeah. I guess up until me too. Right. And then that started changing a little bit. Uh, I think the person who, who thought he was recording him thought he was going to get him in trouble. Uh, I don't think it did. Some people were supporting the hell out of him for that. Uh, I, did you say he did a second round? Yes. Yes. According to the sun, he did a second round, which was probably whoever recorded the video was my guess. Um, and my take on it was if he's yelling and you don't like it, then say it right there. Like be a man and stand up because that's what I had to learn how to do. When somebody talked to me like that at a job, I got in his face, <clears throat> F the job. No job is worth getting yelled at like this and being dressed down and humiliated in front of a bunch of people. So I was ready to pop punch my boss right there. I was like, I don't need this job. Screw it. I don't care. Uh, and you know, I ended up keeping my job for standing up against the boss. Uh, and they could probably do the same too. So if, if the, if the culture of Hollywood will change when you stand up to that stuff, Tom Cruise is just a little, little guy. And, uh, you know, he's the one who has to look taller and yellow flash brought it up in his video, but yeah, he has, he has little, little shoes that make him taller. He has to look yeah. taller to other people. So he is crazy. And there's a lot of craziest, yeah. but they're making pretend for a living. Uh, I, it yeah. sounded to me though, that like he was a little bit aware that like that they're under a microscope right now. Like people like us are watching him because they have been deemed essential over other human beings who can't work right now. And if one picture comes out of people effing around on the set, uh, just like, I don't know, with all of our politicians here being hypocrites, uh, that, that could affect them. That could affect them and then shut down the production. Yeah. That, that video that I saw of like the, the woman whose restaurant had been shut down and then literally right next door to it, they'd opened up like the, the outdoor catering area for a movie, uh, because that was considered to be okay. Whereas her restaurant couldn't function. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty sickening to watch, like that realizing sickening. that's how they're prioritizing people. <clears throat> Uh, and I, I got the name of that production too. It, it was the uh, the good the good girls. I got I put it up on Twitter. The name of the production. Oh, okay. It was a it was a TV show. It was a it was a regular old TV show. And you know what I'm hearing is they're mortified about this. They want to work, and I want everybody to work too. But uh, you can't be prioritized over the other human beings. I don't think the government yeah. gets to do that. But we're letting um, them. Indeed. Uh, Jerry Brown here says, Hey, Drinker, love all your stuff. I just finished Redemption and getting your next four books for Christmas. Cool, man. Uh, um, I hope you enjoy those too. And I appreciate the support. Um, the Black Douglas, Willis hates Die Hard 2 the most until five, I guess. Uh, maybe so. Yeah. Um, he seemed all right in it. I thought he was he was pretty good. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> betrayal there. I'm, I'm amazed you got a copy of it there, Gary. Ah, dude, I got, I've got a whole stack of your books right here. You got a They're section in my stops. house. <laughs> read those <laughs> things, man. I, I've got a whole debt. This this house is crazy, but I'm going to read your books in my Hobbit hole, uh, smoking uh, my my Hobbit pipes. Oh, got a little smoking it. room in this house. Yeah, I'm going to use it. News around nice. about the nice hot tank. Is well, it just me or is Jaws overrated? Quarter black just well, puts just you. Quarter <laughs> yeah. It's just you. Who put who put <laughs> that? Who who originally said that? Newsarama. Newsarama. Which is oh, now oh, incorporated into <laughs> so, yeah. Is it just me or are you insignificant? That's what I would respond with. Uh, 89 yeah. likes, 410 quote tweets. <laughs> Ooh. Ow, that is a ratio, sir. Yes. Wow. Stupid cunt. Uh, it's just, yeah, doing a hot take for shitty clout. Uh, Stephen Otten mm -hmm. says, one, two, five, three, sir. <laughs> three grenades explodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the, the magical grenades that take five minutes to go off. Um, 
Chris Smitty, 820. Hello, gents, enjoying the stream. Thank you. Drinker, here's a shameless bribe to try and get on a stream with you. Um, introduction email sent. Cheers, Christopher L. Smith. Uh, cool, man. I mean, I, I thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I only do so many streams like in a month or whatever, so it's it's not always possible to get everyone on, but uh, I'll take a look at your email and see what we can sort out. Um, Matt Lines, so when is Die Hard, Women Die Hard are coming out with Jonah McLean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give it time, it'll happen. Pirates of the Caribbean, reboot or women. I mean, could you, could you imagine a Die Hard movie where it's like a woman as John McLean and like, she has to go through what he goes through in the first movie, like getting beat to no. shit, getting shot, getting her feet like sliced up with glass, you know, like that wouldn't be allowed. So she would just kind of storm through the movie, like beating the crap out of everyone and winning everything. It'd be amazing. It'd be like the, it'd be like the dullest movie ever. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, just, you can't, what, be, what if the new Pirates the... <laughs> this is, <laughs> Uh, this is quite dark. What <laughs> the Pirates of the Caribbean reboot with with all the women? What if it's just like two hours of them getting ripped and beaten? <laughs> you, mean you mean if it was like, accurate for the time? Like yeah. a bunch of women's like, we're gonna go hit the high seas in the Caribbean. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Five minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kill me! Horrifying, kill me. Horrifying, absolutely horrifying. You like leave the cinema like, <laughs> <laughs> like hair's gone white. <laughs> Remember the reactions for oh <laughs> god damn it. Why am I, I hate it? Never mind. I'm just about just about to bring up a movie and the name of the movie went um Blair Witch. Blair Witch. Remember when Blair Witch came out here in the States? I don't know if you, you guys were privy to our news. People got freaked. So they would interview people. There was this whole marketing push that it was the scariest movie ever made. And you know yeah. what? For a, for a movie made for like 5,000 bucks, I thought it was pretty decent. I thought it was okay. But there was people having nervous breakdowns like outside the theater and they would, you know, the news would catch it. And it might be something like that. Yeah, so I came in for a fun pirate movie and now... <sighs> yeah. Somebody like peed himself. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Hey." laughs> It's just like it's like Midnight Express, but on the high seas. It's just on the like, high seas, yeah. I mean, the <laughs> thing is, like, all of all of social media would lose their minds if this movie just implied that female pirates would struggle in any way, you know, or that they they would be at any kind of disadvantage whatsoever. So, yeah, your movie some, would. Some historian will come up with well. There was a female pirate in 1542. And yeah, it was probably like Sea Hag, the Haggy Hag with yeah. no teeth and like one leg and like nobody would, nobody would. Like, and they, she probably genuinely <laughs> scared people by convincing them they were, she was a witch or something like that. Sure. There might have been one. Uh, there's, you know, there was, there's one Joan of Arc. There was one Joan of Arc. And uh, yeah, she was burned to death when she was like 15 or something like that. So, 19. 19 15 what's the difference yeah um yeah it's it's that weird oh, rationale of like well we found one bizarre little historical like anomaly and we're just going to use that as justification for like ah this happened all the time all throughout yep. history so you know it's it's fine uh it's just dumb as fuck you know it's just wishful thinking for the most You're part ready for the female hamlet it's coming well, female we <laughs> hamlet <laughs> Black and Boleyn incoming. So. Black and Boleyn. And yeah. there's more more members of the cast are black as well. So it's Oh, just why not? I would just say, just make it... Uh, are they trying to say... Oh, uh, yeah. Why not? Just do it. It's, the, the, the wording that they use... Hamilton. Is, just make it Hamilton. Well, they, they said it's something ridiculous. Like, it's... um, It's... it's uh, God, it's not like a reimagining. It's... It, <laughs> They use some dumb terminology, like you know, some sort of it's a it's a it's a brave interpretation. It's just like just fuck off. Yeah. It's oh it's yeah. History. They use the same yeah. rationalization for Lord of the Rings too. As a matter of fact, the, the one ring dot net uh said used Hamilton as an example of why Lord of the it's totally fine if they just race and gender swap everything in Lord of the Rings too. Yeah. 
It, it's so it's so frustrating because you always know the exact thought process that they went through to make it happen. There's no creative um, justification for it. There's no like desire to tell a really good story. It's just we've got to have our representation, and we'll just mm-hmm. do it any way that we can. You know, totally like undermine our own story because it doesn't matter, and people will just have to deal with it. You know. And it it just absolutely takes you out of whatever you're watching because you can see exactly where it was coming from and why it was done. Mm. Um, that was actually the the next question. The next super chat was about Lord of oh. the Rings um, from Dithy O'Murchu, um, hail to drinker and as from Ireland. Um, Die Hard Two is solid fun. Question: How tell or how terrible will Amazon's Lord of the Rings be? Pretty terrible. I'm thinking. I wanted it to be really good. I was excited about it. But uh, if you look in the creative people behind it, uh, it's not a very strong uh, right. The writer's room is filled with Breaking Bad. Like, just because you can write some, you know, really good drama doesn't mean you can touch high fantasy, high, you know, a high romantic fantasy, by the way, not high dark fantasy like Game of Thrones. I would say a Breaking Bad writer could probably write House of the Dragon or something like that. But you're you're t- you're taking on Tolkien, so uh, I don't know. I don't the think terminology so. that they're using that scares. When I say scares me, it just makes me. The second word my to describe eyes. it. The second word they used to describe it was diverse. Diverse. Yeah. yeah. Once they start throwing in the buzzwords, you're like, yeah, I know exactly what your priorities are going to be with this show. Uh, really good. And, and, and that's that's the thing that, you know, you look at the Lord of the Rings movies, they were fantastic and they didn't pander to any of that stuff. They just concentrated on being more or less faithful to the books and telling a really good story with appropriate actors for the roles. And everyone loved them. They were great. You know, that's that's how you do it correctly. If you want to have a show with a super diverse cast, you know, create your own fantasy drama with mm-hmm. them. And then you can have whatever rules you want. You can have any mix of people that you want. No problem. Expanse does that perfectly. But it's about yeah. Yeah. Them, it's about redoing. It's about taking away. Yep. It's about redoing what you love, taking away what you love. Uh, it's about changing what you've grown up with, your perception of a a franchise uh it's all it's all so insidious it's all so malicious uh yeah but this whole thing is predicated on race so the whole thing is born out of racism by racists anyway so the whole thing in itself from from inception till to now where it's getting more clout by dumb fucks uh it's all born out of racism and it won't ever get away from racism because that's where it started so this whole identity bollocks this whole diversity bollocks it will start and end constantly with with race with everything just focused on race which in itself is the whole basis of racism so these these people are just they're dumb but they they <laughs> Oh, but it's the victim narrative, of course, and this is this is why they they need it because they need to have the victim narrative because if they they need the power, <sighs> they need to lord it over, and then they need a villain. Uh, so you know, we just get in a terrible. Uh, it it becomes, yeah, yeah, it becomes really draining to kind of go around the houses with this sort of thing because what it devolves into is like the same kind of arguments over and over again. And it's hard to have that same argument with people continuously. Um, and the only real kind of like losers out of this are the people who enjoy these these shows or these properties because what they enjoyed gets gradually changed and degraded because of all this this ridiculous fighting over nothing really that keeps going on. And it's it's a hard one to resolve because it just kind of feels like there's no end to it. And I know that's uh, kind of a pessimistic well, outlook on it, but it's it's a really difficult one to solve. Like the people 
who push this stuff will never stop. Like you will never no, change you, their minds. The only you thing you can do is try and see them. Yes, you can do things like that, and the the only thing you can do is just try and. I, I guess almost the things that they are pushing, the the battlegrounds they're fighting on, have to be destroyed themselves. So, you know, if they want to wait, if they want to take the MCU and make it super woke, well. The only way that's going to get resolved is if the MCU goes under and all their movies flop. But then yeah. the, the result is that that's gone then. Rolling that franchise the is gone. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And it's not it's not a great resolution, but I can't think of any other way to do it, really, because they have to be shown to fail in order for people to realize that you can't keep hiring people like this. But the parasites, Audiences they just move from one franchise to another, destroying them. Yeah. So, so the people yeah. that would destroy Lord of the Rings, for example, let's say this is a massive flop, identity bollocks. Uh, they'll just they'll just get jobs on Battlestar Galactica. They'll get jobs on Star Wars. They'll they'll just move at like a like a virus to another yep. uh, fr- uh, franchise to infect, and then that will get pulled down. Comics has done it to himself, uh, to itself. TV's doing it to itself. Look at the fuck me you watch smallville and then you watch current day cw it, it, it's it's unbelievable smallville was was a was a great uh show with um every something for everyone for adults for 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 kids fun cheesy um, yeah it's a bit fun cheesy CW. you know the, yeah, the, yeah. you know they weren't scared for you know get tom to get his top off get the girls in a bra you know it, this is this is going out at seven eight o'clock at night um, and and the dialogue was good, and characters felt unique. Everyone had their own uh, voice. Uh, and now it's just you look at we were talking about earlier, Discovery. Oh my god, they they're not even speaking fucking English. Uh, no. They're not even they're not even speaking a language that we can understand. It's just contrived, awful, um, fake ass Bay Area shite. Uh, that, that's contemporary to, to a very specific part of California. Uh, and, and it's just, it's grating to, to, to try and listen to. But yeah. you'll, get, you'll yeah. get little nuggets here and there with, you know, Mando and stuff like that. And well, yeah, Gary, like you were, yeah, The Expanse, that handles diverse casting really well because from what I've seen so far, you've got a really broad range of characters played by lots of different actors from different places. But being a certain demographic doesn't guarantee you're going to be super smart or super good or super competent at things. Like, they make their cast a mix. So you've got good, you know, um, black people or Asian people or women, but you've also got bad ones. You've got smart mm-hmm. ones. You've got stupid ones. Like, and it doesn't, it, it's a fair mix of people from different areas or different cultures, whatever. Um, and it's more intelligent and it's easier to get into then because you don't feel like you're being preached to. It's just what you see is a natural result of how humanity is spread out and, and intermingled. And this is what you end up with. And it makes complete sense in the context of the story. That's how you do it correctly. Oh my God. There was a great line in the first three episodes of the season uh, where a guy is calling out Fred Johnson. I'm sure you've come across Fred Johnson and he's all, you all, you know what your problem is. You always think the underdog is the good guy. And that's exactly what this show is. It shows like if Star Trek Discovery was taken on the OPA, they would be the sympathetic ones. They'd be the ones that's always right. But no, they're shown to be pretty bad. Uh, Some of them are good and some of them are really bad. And they have been actually victimized. Uh, So it shows that uh, a victimized culture uh, can can be bad, can be bad. It can result into a a bad thing. So uh, it it shows everybody. And it's the way it's structured. It's the way the whole story is structured. Is is you have uh, it's what Game of Thrones started out to be. You had mm. good people in service of bad men or women, uh, and you had these factions going at each other with a big bad coming from the outside that's going to wipe everybody out if they don't like work together. Uh, mm-hmm. But now it might end better than Game of Thrones. We'll see. 
Yeah, it can't end much worse, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, one one thing I was going to say to you, chaps, um, I'm kind of conscious, especially for as and myself, like it's it's like 1 a.m. here, um, and we've been streaming for about four hours, but I, I don't think we're likely to get through all the Super Chats tonight anyway, so what it might make sense for me to do is, is kind of end the stream before trying to get... I don't want to rush the rest of them, essentially, so perhaps end the stream and then I can just do a super a super chat catch up stream tomorrow or something to get through all the others. Um, Cause obviously I'm not going to miss any of them out, but uh, I want to give them my proper attention rather than just skimming them. Uh, and yeah, it's say that you don't want to miss a thing. Well, <laughs> the thing is I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep. Because I'll miss you, baby. Miss you, and I don't want to miss a thing. And I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> I like how you get the hand at that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm thinking because, um, yeah, there's loads of them. And I, I don't think we're likely to get through them in one stream. Um, I blame me. I won't shut up. It probably would have got through if I didn't show up. So yeah. <laughs> Gary's monopolizing this. <laughs> Where were you when we needed you in Die Hard 2? <laughs> uh, but no, on, yeah, no. Uh, honestly, man, no, I do appreciate you coming on. I know it was like you jumping from one stream to the other, but it's great to have you on. Um, oh, no, I, you don't say no to the drinker. No, it was my well, honor. It was my there's plenty of ladies have definitely said no to me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as and I play Cory now, dude. It's way yeah. too late. For that. You've yeah. been no. all night, man. I'm not believing <laughs> that one. Are you chat? Mm. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe as, as well. was like junior high or something, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but as as well, man. Thank you for being on this stream tonight um, and and experiencing this awesome movie with me. It's it's been a pleasure to have you as always, mate. Oh, thank uh, you for so. having me again, dude. It's always a pleasure. It is always a pleasure to. It's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And good, uh, man, to, good chat. So yeah, yeah. To to everyone in chat, like for all the super chats, for all, all the awesome comments, um, my bath water will be soon for sale on my Teespring store. So thanks for that. <laughs> but no, seriously, thanks for everyone that's tuned in tonight, and hope you've enjoyed the stream. And like I say, I will do a, a catch up stream tomorrow to get through all of the remaining super chats. So thanks very much for for everyone. Um, and that that is all we've got for today. So I guess we're gonna go away right now. <laughs> oh, 